Hello, and welcome to The Law Patrol, proudly presented by Glaze the Legal. On this channel, we take a look at all things legal and lawful, as they happen in Australia and around the world. We review concepts, cases, and just generally shoot the brakes. Whilst we don't give advice, we can answer some questions and hopefully at least point you in the right direction. As we cover everything legal and don't shy away from the hard topics, we may occasionally cover themes or discussions that some may find disturbing or distasteful. So if necessary, make yourself a cup of concrete, put on your big kid pants and pull up a chair. If you have any questions or comments about anything we discuss, please don't hesitate to reach out by email at info at Follow us on Facebook and remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Now, let's get into it. And good evening and welcome to this episode of The Law Patrol. I'm Hayden Glaster. Uh, it's a lovely eight degrees, I believe, at 10 to midnight here in Melbourne. So hopefully everyone else around the world's doing slightly better than we are. Um, look, this one was a little bit unplanned, but um, I decided to spend my Saturday reading all 109 pages of the UK trial judgment, and I had to get a few things off my chest. Um so, basically, I read all of this, and as you can see, there's quite a bit of highlighting. So, look, there's a good chance that this is going to be a multi-video, multi-part video, but um, basically, having read through the judgment, I'm pissed off, and basically, it comes down to a very clear indication that these sorts of cases should not be tried by a judge alone. And it's very, very clear that this judge was particularly biased, at least in my opinion anyway. To start with, I'll start by reading the original article so that we've got a starting point. Um, so the original article that appeared in The Sun Online was Gone Potty. How can J.K. Rowling be genuinely happy casting wife-beater Johnny Depp in the new Fantastic Beasts film? In his brand new column, Dan Wooten reveals the Harry Potter author is facing a significant backlash from the Me Too movement over her decision to stand by the casting of Depp, despite claims he beat ex-wife Amber Heard. By Dan Wooten, executive editor. For a holier-than-thou Twitterati preacher, J.K. Rowling tries to present herself as a leading light for women in the entertainment industry. But the author will need to use every trick in Harry Potter's magical book to handle the growing outrage in Hollywood over her decision to stand by the casting of Johnny Depp in the lead role in her precious Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them franchise. Today I reveal a significant backlash from within the Me Too movement and Time's Up movement because the Scot is hell-bent on backing her famous pal despite his clearly inexcusable behaviour towards ex-wife Amber Heard. Rowling is proving herself to be the worst type of Hollywood hypocrite here. Her claim is that she is genuinely happy to have Depp star as the central character, dark wizard Gellert Grindelwald, in her big-budget film sequel Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, Provide, which provides him total rehabilitation in the eyes of the movie industry. She is condoning behaviour that she would be loudly slamming on social media if it was a male executive making the same decision. So let me be very clear for the benefit of the apparently unaware Miss Rowling, overwhelming evidence was filed to show Johnny Depp engaged in domestic violence against his wife Amber Heard. She was granted a restraining order after alleged alleging Depp assaulted her following a drunken argument and submitted photographs to the court, showing her bruised face. Heard, backed by a number of friends on the record, recounted a detailed history of domestic abuse incidents, some of which had led to her fearing for her life. Bullshit. According to the court documents, there were kicks, punches, shoves, and all-out assault. While Depp's many... High-powered friends accused Heard of simply seeking a payout. She proved them wrong by committing to donate all of the £5 million she received to charity. Uh, however, he set the star as Gallagher... I think that's just the caption for the missing photo. Uh, if Rowling is a supporter of women's rights, she claims... She has been blindsided by... Has she been blindsided by a personal friendship with Depp? After all, she coveted him enough to have spent $22 million buying his old yacht, which he had ironically renamed for Heard. 
Rowling is a powerful figure who likes to slaughter anyone who dares publicly question her morals or decisions. But today, two brave members of the Me Too slash Time's Up movements, both victims of Harvey Weinstein, go public to question her decision. In a message to Rowling actress Caitlin Delaney says we would like to see things change in this industry and not see people who have allegedly victimized women. It is not much of a change if you are seeing people rewarded with roles. Amber has been through a difficult time with him, but it seems like what happened hasn't really affected Johnny. We would like to see things change in the industry, and this is an example of that not happening. I would hope for different role models than someone who has this kind of history. It is important when you are casting. Uh, actress Catherine Kendall adds, I don't stand behind hitting people or abusing people. It seems that Amber got hurt. As someone who has been the victim of sexual abuse and a supporter of Me Too and telling my story to help others, I cannot advocate violence. I think it is a confusing message to put people in roles that are aimed at children and young people if there is a suggestion they have done something of that nature. So today I publish five questions Rowling must answer. One, do you take domestic violence ac accusations as seriously as sexual harassment, given your support of the Me Too movement? Two, if so, do you believe Amber Heard's detailed 2016 court filing detailing abuse allegations by Johnny Depp, which included pictures showing her injuries and the records account and on the record accounts by other words? Do you believe? Okay. <sighs> Sorry, forgive me. Like I said, it's almost midnight, but I just had to get some of this off my chest. Um, so my brain's not quite 100% working. Uh, four, you admitted last year that there were legitimate reasons, sorry, legitimate questions about Depp's casting. What were they and how did you overcome them? And five, Heard appeared to suggest on Instagram that you had taken her divorce statement out of context in order to defend Depp's casting. Have you spoken to her directly? While Rowling has an inability to ever admit she's made a mistake, it's not too late to last minute recast. It would cost millions, but Rowling has the money. I believe it's only... It is the only decision that would show a woman's true character and principle, even if her famous friends are involved. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, look, that's that's basically the article as, as it appeared in uh, 20... Hang on, I did have notes on that. When was it? So that's the article as it was originally posted on the 27th of April, 2008, 2018. The article itself was amended the day after to remove the term wife beater from it, and a hard copy version of that then appeared. Um, now, this is basically 100 and... Uh, taking out the covering page and the actual article itself. So what, 106 pages of what I would call absolute tripe. The judge appeared so biased that it was not funny. Um, and actually, I'll just go through and remove some of these comments that I was making as I was going through. Headline amended to remove wife beater. Yes, we know that. Uh, hard copy article uses amended. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Oh, we got a few comments coming in. Sorry, I got off on a tangent. That's the volume low, is it? Um, let's have a look. Is that a bit, is that a bit better? Hopefully. Yep. Okay. Um, Kathy, how are you doing? Haven't. Fair enough. Sure to cook. Good to see you. You don't have a right to trial a jury trial. Now, look. So that um, let's let's be clear. Let's be clear. That was in relation to the case that took place in the UK. I'm located here in Melbourne, Australia. We have both jury trials and judge alone. This particular case, though, was held in front of a judge alone, which, in the circumstances, I believe, was woefully inappropriate. Um, in any case where there is this kind of material that's involved, I genuinely believe that a jury of your peers needs to be involved. As much as I think the US is being sucked, some countries come in and <laughs> smash that like and subscribe. Cheers, Kathy. Is this the Sun article? Yes, that that was very much the um, Sun article. 
what bloody idiot wrote that the sun is notorious rag here in the uk uh, well according to the byline it was mr dan wooten who was was uh the second case so um excuse me sorry about that um so uh, I don't know how many of you are going to want to listen to the entire thing because it is a hundred and something odd pages, but I've gone through and picked out the bits and pieces that I thought were appropriate for me to make um, comment on. Oh, cheers, Jen. Um, but basically there were some things in here that just really, really pissed me off. It was very clear that the judge um, took certain people's um, opinions over others and the, the way the weight that he attributed to various people's opinions and that sort of thing was just so far out of bounds as far as I'm concerned. Um, so where are we? So in general, the whole... The, so Johnny brought the, the claim in the UK court, basically claiming for libel, saying that he'd been slandered by the Sun's news article. And whilst the Sun didn't, um, didn't really dispute that, the content or what was included in the article, what they did say was that they were able to rely on the um, full defense of substantial truth. So basically what they said was that the claimant was guilty on overwhelming evidence of serious domestic violence against his then wife, causing significant injury and leading to her to be fearful for her life, for which the claimant was constrained to pay no less than $5 million to compensate her and which resulted in him being subjected to a continuing restraining order and for that reason is not fit to work in the film industry. Now, that's basically what The Sun hung their hat on. Um, how accurate that was, you know, I, th I think we can all agree it was a bit... Um, Bit of BS. Judge worked before becoming a judge for a law firm representing the son. The son, his son worked for Murdoch. Wife is friends with Elaine. Judge retired the day up. Far out. How how was that not grounds for for appeal? I mean, surely there would have been a recusal application or something if any of that had been known prior. But that certainly makes a little more sense. Um. The particulars of the claim in the publication of the articles claimed that it had caused serious harm to uh, Johnny Depp's uh, personal and professional reputa reputation, and he asked that the court take into account the seriousness of the allegations, the huge extent of the publication, the effect of the, up the accusations of violence against women in the context of the widely known Me Too and Time's Up movements, the inclusions of quotes or purported quotes from women described as victims of Harvey, we Harvey Weinstein, and the very likely intended effect that the article would have to finish the claimant's career. Um, particulars of the claim also led to the claim for damages is that the restraining order referred to in the article was only temporary and Ms. Heard's application for a restraining order was dismissed and yet that was not mentioned in anywhere in the article. The article failed to include any denials by the claimant of Ms. Heard's allegations, although the defendants were aware of them. Um, so the Sun had previously reported that the police had attended the home of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard on the 21st of May 2016, but had concluded that no crime had been committed, that the matter had been omitted from the articles, which instead gave a one-sided and unfair account of the uh, evidence. The articles had been mis had misquoted or taken out of context remarks from Catherine Kendall, a Me Too Time's Up victim and failed to correct the website article even after Miss Kendall herself objected to being misquoted. Um, now, so they, they started using bits and pieces of um, acronyms and that sort of thing here as well. So uh, anytime I'm referring to RAD, I'm talking about the defendant's pleadings that they lodged. So their defense, because they surprisingly, they had to go back and re-amend their um, defense a couple of times. Um, so the, where are we? Defendants served the original version of the defense. The most recent version was on the 6th of March. Yep, that's fine. AH chose to violate the TRD. Yes, yes, she did. Uh, greetings from Texas. Did it come up in the VA trial that the restraining order was dismissed? 
Um, I actually don't know. I don't, I don't think that became a part of it. Um, no, that's, that's something I'll have to double check on. Um, yeah, so she amended her defendant. The defendants re- re- amended the defense so that they could rely on following meaning with the following meaning that the claimant beat his wife Amber Heard, causing her to have significant injury and on occasion leading to her to fear for her life. The defendants pled that the claimant and Miss Heard began living together in or about 2012 and married on 3 February 2015. They separated on or around 22 May 2016, and throughout the relationship he was controlling, verbally and physically abusive, particularly that he was under the influence of alcohol and drugs. Now, one thing I will say, um, Depp's team in the Virginia trial handled his use of drugs and alcohol very well. The judge in this case, I feel, put far too much emphasis on his drug use and uh, um, alcohol intoxication and that sort of thing. And I I feel like that very much was his way of finding an excuse, basically, to blame Johnny Depp for everything that happened. As we'll go, as I'll go through, but as I said, it might take a couple of videos because it's, you know, it's quite a bit. Um, but basically pretty much every instance where he had any sort of um, anywhere where the judge had to make any sort of opinion that might have been in Johnny's favor, he sort of pulled it back and said, well, no, I don't think it's appropriate for me to because um, I'm of the opinion that at the time that this happened, Johnny had to have been on drugs and or alcohol. So um, where are we? Um, oh, in addition to this, so in addition to the pleadings, there was also a confidential schedule to the defense. So Amber and Johnny both actually put in additional pleadings that were determined to be confidential and not read out in open court. Um, so at this point, Yeah, whole world's no. Yeah, exactly. Um, actually, that's a good point. Let me see. I can't actually see if that's worked or not. Oh, much better. All right. Um, I have had to move the streaming stuff onto my screen up there. So if you see me looking up, you know why. Um, where are we? Um, claimant initially served the current version. So at the time, it, it was sufficient at this stage to note... Uh, that the claimant denies ever assaulting Miss Heard. On the contrary, he contends that it was she who assaulted him. Um, the parties reached an agreement for marital settlement on 15th of August 2016. Um, the son actually applied for a stay of the present proceedings because they wanted to rely on evidence from Amber, but she was unable to assist them because of the confidentiality restrictions of the divorce agreement. Didn't actually stop her from actually attending to give evidence, though. Um, On 18th of December 2018, she then wrote the article in the Washington Post with the headline, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced the culture's wrath wrath that has to change. As a result of this, in March 2019, the claimant sued for libel. Oh, crap, I just rechanged that color. Um... I just got a note there. It's it's it was interesting to note that the judge in this case was already aware that Amber was also being sued for libel, and it was interesting because, as you'll see from going on a little bit further, they actually made Johnny disclose various documents that had been provided and prepared for the trial in Virginia. Um, but despite the fact that that was the case, 
um, Johnny was unable to force Amber to provide any documents in this case because she wasn't a party to it. He actually made an application to the court to force her to disclose various documents and the judge refused. So it's, yeah, it, like I said, it, it seems very one-sided and very biased. Um, in terms of the trial. Um, oh, one thing to note as well, um, Johnny changed his lawyers in the middle of all this as well. So when he originally started this, he was with Brown Rudnick, the same um, law firm that represents him in the Virginia trial, um, who actually also have a office in London. And um, for some reason, he switched to Shillings LLP, who are listed over here. Um, I'm, I'm willing to bet that he regrets that decision now, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, there was a pre-trial review in February 2020. The principal issue was being debated was whether or not there was an application for disclosure. A number of categories of documents were sought, including documents produced by either side in the Virginia libel action. Um, he recognised that the judge in Virginia had made a protective order on the 25th of September 2019, which allowed either party to designate documents as confidential. That protective order had allowed the party to concern to permit documents to be used for the purposes other than the Virginia libel action. So basically, he said that as long as Amber gave a release, the uh, the son could force Johnny to hand over whatever documents they wanted to in relation to the Virginia case as well. Um Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, look, that's perfectly fine. Like I said, it's it's uh, it was something that was really niggling at me. I wanted to actually see what they um, had to say. So sounds like the judge had already made a pre-judgment. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with that. It's it's a case of I think he'd made his mind up long before. Oh, Frederick, hey. Um, but yeah, what, what was I saying? Yeah, so the, the the judge in the UK case made a further protective order basically saying that provided Amber gave a release to the documents, um, the the son could force him to disclose anything. Within 48 hours, they had he had to make a witness statement personally confirming that he provided all Virginia libel document, documents to his lawyers in the UK. And within 72 hours, the solicitors were required to confirm that they conducted a review of the libel action documents to ascertain which of them fell within the civil procedure rules in the UK. And within the same time, any of the Virginia libel documents, which had not so far been disclosed, but which came under rule 31.6 were to be disclosed. That's nasty. We had a point list of what the hell moments in this case. There's already a ream of them. Yeah. Um, to be perfectly honest, I started keeping track and I I had to, I, I just started highlighting, honestly, because it was just easier. Um, uh, that's all just civil procedure stuff that was really irrelevant for the most part. Um Right. Okay. So here's the thing. So here's two pe two pieces of evidence that were kept out. Um, so there was a David Kilaki and Kate James, who was Heard's personal assistant, the one that had the axe to grind. Now, David Kilaki provided um, a witness statement as to the fact that Amber had apparently come on to him when he was install installing a sound system in a BMW in California. Um, I can kind of understand why that was. Um, sorry, just getting distracted by the chat there. Um, I can just kind of understand why that was kept out, but it sort of goes to her credibility as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, yeah, so she made an inappropriate comment about him being alone in a dark garage with him and that they could do anything that they wanted and no one would see. He felt, in it, he felt that it was inappropriate and he was uncomfortable by it, and he proceeded to show her how to use her stereo. Um, Kate James, the personal assistant, part of her testimony was struck out. Um, he refused for the mechanic's uh, testimony at all to be allowed in, and only part of Miss James's went in. Get back to some of these chats. They couldn't talk about the UK trial. How come they were able to use... JD's UK testimony on cross. Um, that was basically because it's still technically a inconsistent prior statement, so they can still use it for impeachment. Um, 
in terms of the actual inclusion of the details of the UK case. Um, same for, here's the principle, same with Azure. Yeah. Um, Oh shit! See, this is what happens. I lose track. I lose my train of thought. Um, Seth happens. Good morning. Um, good morning from California. Sorry, I'm late. No, look, honestly, it's it's. Th this was purely random. I wasn't genuinely intending to jump on here, but I um, uh, I was. I got by the time I got to the end of reading the pages, I was very very annoyed. And to say hello. Is probation versus judi prejudicial really an issue in a bench trial? Um, look, I would only say because you've got you've when you've got the judge as both the finder of law and the finder of fact, their internal bias is going to be very, um, very prominent, as you'll see as we go a little bit further into this. So it's it's not supposed to be an issue, but it probably I would consider it to be, yeah. David want a payment for the Mustang if <laughs> um, Where are we? Defendants applied for the declaration. The claim is struck out. Incomplete compliance. No, that's fine. Uh, on 29th of June, the judge heard an application by Amber, sorry, by Johnny, that Amber should make third-party disclosure pursuant to 3117. Yeah, so here's the thing. So Johnny actually made an application to force Amber to provide copies of medical reports and documents and all sorts of other things. And the judge literally refused the application. He said, no, that's not part of this trial. I'm not, we're not dealing with it. Just move on with what you've got. I can't see how that is in any way appropriate. Um, yeah, refused to make disclosure the evidential documents relevant as a third party. Um, oh, and, and this is the other thing. So I'm sure you're all aware that in the Virginia case, uh, um, when people were coming in to give testimony, they weren't allowed in the court beforehand. They weren't supposed to be watching media or anything like that. Despite the fact that she was a third party, Amber was allowed to sit in the court the entire time prior to giving her testimony. Um Johnny actually sought a direction that she be excluded from the court until the time she gave her evidence. That didn't happen. Um, so it just, yeah, seems quite biased. So did AH give evidence and undergo cross? Yes, she did. She, she gave evidence. I don't believe uh, she appeared as a witness and gave cross, but um, she tripped over herself. In, yeah. Well, um, she, she didn't give as reliable evidence. Let's put it that way. I mean, you know, as much as you can, I suppose. I mean, let, let's, let's be clear at this point in time, she did still have Elaine giving her advice and evidence and that sort of thing as well as to how to comport herself in front of the just the judge. So, um, actually, did I read a note before that someone said that the judge knew Elaine? My friends with Elaine and launched with Amber and Elaine just prior to the trial. Okay. Um, with all this coming out and him winning his case in Virginia, do you think he has grounds to go back to trial at the UK? Um, unfortunately, I don't think so. I mean, res judicata, basically, despite the fact that the judge may have done wrong, means that he can't apply for a new case. Um because the because in this instance the judge was both the finder of law and the finder of fact, they can't he can't appeal on the judge's actual decisions as to his findings. Um, in the US, not excluding a witness to testify for grounds for appeal. Water. Different countries, different rules, unfortunately. Judicial review pending according to a UK article. Excellent. Very happy to hear that. I haven't actually seen it, but I'll um, I'll take your word for it and have a look for it in a minute. Um, would AH be at risk for perjury in the UK? Yes. And that's that's one of the reasons. So some of the things that came out of this case um, is that... Um, so we've got... You'll, you'll see later that this is... 
this case actually has the basis for why there's perjury charges potentially pending in Australia. And based on what's come out of the case in Virginia, directly contradicts what's included in this case as well. So yes, you'll see that there are um, potential for perjury. UK judge stated that AH had no reason to lie because she donated it. Everything she should be assumed is true. Son won because they had reasonable belief, reason to believe her. Um, look, we'll get to that. The, the really interesting thing is in terms of the judge believing whether or not she donated the money, that is literally a s single line or two in this judgment. So it's, it's literally right down the bottom. He basically says, I do not believe that she is a gold digger because her donating the funds to charity are not the actions of a gold digger. And that's basically all he said. And it's right at the very end of the, the judgment. About whether or not it was reasonable for, could reasonably believe the evidence hand. Not that it was. No. So it's um, in order to use a truth defense, you still have to be able to prove that it was substantially true. If you, um, even if you believe it to be true, if you're still putting it out on a news website and that sort of thing, you can't rely on the truth defense. You can't just defame someone just because you believe it to be true. You have to be able to show that it's substantially true. Um, where are we? Okay, uh, where are we? Yeah, so here we go. Statutory defense of truth. So the 2013 Act substituted the statutory defense of truth which now states it is a defense to an action for defamation for the defendant to show that the imputation conveyed by the statement complained of is substantially true. Uh, further to this, subsection two and three applies in an action for defamation if the statement complained of com conveys two or more distinct imputations. If one or more of the imputa imputations is not shown to be substantially true, the defense under this subsection does not fail if having regard to the imputations which are shown to be substantially true, the imputations which are not shown to be substantially true do not seriously harm the, claim to the claimant's reputation. Basically just a fancy way of uh, saying that if, um, if there's multiple instances of something being substantially true or not, provided at least one of the implications is substantially true and it defames someone, it's still not a full defence. As I understand it, the issues was the definition of DV, including any act in the UK, but AH changed the definition in the US to in her own direct examination. So she sucked him in, hook, line, and sink to believe his lies. Someone, someone got paid off. I can't comment on that. That could actually get me in trouble. Um, I, I can say many things on this channel. I can make many commentaries and criticisms. I can't... Um, can't make any sort of suggestion as to whether or not there's uh, bribery or um, unethical practices or maladministration or all sorts of things. Um, where are we? Morning, Lord. Um, if she does have grounds for appeal, could she still face perjury charges in the UK? Can she be banned in the UK as well as Australia? Sorry if I already answered. No, look, I, I have no issues with you asking questions. I, as, as anyone who is frequently on this channel will know, any opportunity that I have to um, answer questions or anything like that, I'm more than happy to. It, um, in which case, I should probably actually answer that question. Sorry. Um, if she does have grounds for appeal, could she face perjury? Yeah, it's because the, the grounds for the perjury have come out of the evidence that was adduced in the trial. So the fact that he won isn't the grounds for the perjury charges. It's the, it's the information and the evidence that came out in the trial that's going to give rise to the grounds for perjury. So irrespective of whether or not she appeals and re-win, uh, if she appeals and wins, the evidence that came out in the current case should be theoretically enough for the perjury charges. Um, can she actually, I should probably do the second part of that as well. Can she be banned in the UK as well as Oz? Um, look, that, that I don't know what the uh, UK rules are in terms of um, being able to, you know, banish people, but my understanding would be yes. It's, um, it's, it's pretty much one of those things where it's, it's a sovereign country. They can do whatever the heck they like, really. Uh, can't find a thing. Can't find anything about a review of the UK decision. Hmm. Um, Elaine got called to court yesterday, maybe slapped down for her statements to on MSM about... Yeah, look, maybe. We can only wait and see. 
Um, it says it wants social housing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it is so funny, but I love his accent. Yeah, and look, and Maud, I will, I will admit to it, right at the moment, I'm still getting over a cold, so I'm quite nasally as well, so that's probably not helping. The UK judge should have recused himself. Yeah, look, based on the amount of bias that I'm seeing, someone's somewhere stuffed up by not making an application for them for him to recuse himself. It's surely someone somewhere would have known. I know one thing for sure, if she actually convicted of perjury charges in any country, she won't be allowed into Canada ever again, nor any country. Yeah, and look, fingers crossed, we can only hope. <laughs> Elaine threatening to report court reporter for hugging JD. Reporter could not get back into court to get computer. Ben, she got it for her. She picked it up and JD hugged her. Yeah, well, I suppose we'll sort of see where that goes. I, I did um, I did hear a lot about that. I mean, apparently it's not uncommon for um, court reporters to occasionally leave things behind. But anyway. Standing alone, people don't understand. Okay, okay. I'll take your word for it. You make a good pair. You have a stuffed up nose. I woke up with pink eye. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Mm. Um, mine sounds similar. Well. <laughs> oh, no. Just, oh, fair enough. Mm, fair enough. That's from the stand means becoming an extreme fan or simping. Just joking with you. Actually, Fred, thank you for explaining that. I had seen that in a few places, and I, I didn't want to be the person to stick my hand up and say, what the hell does that mean? So, um, Anyway, where was I? Um, yeah, so the Section 2 of the Defamation Act makes it clear that for a defendant to prove that libel was substantially true, uh, it's necessary for them to prove that it's substantially true. The burden of proof, therefore, rests on the defendant. Um Standard of proof is the balance of probabilities, which for anyone in the US, that's the exact same um, balance. That's the same burden of proof that was used in the Virginia case. It's just a different way of phrasing it. Over here in Australia and in the UK, we use what's called the balance of probabilities, which basically means what's more likely to have happened to 51. Or we call it 51, but it's just as easily 50.1% chance of happening. Um, I think uh, in America it's called the preponderance of evidence, I think is the phrase that um, Hogue was throwing around. Um, I.e., is it more probable than not that the article was substantially true in the meaning that it bore? In this case, is it more likely than not that the claimant did what the article's alleged? Um, in essence, the court must be satisfied that an, an event occurred if the court considers on the evidence that the occurrence of the event was more likely than not. Um, where are we? Defense of truth, the particulars. Oh, whoops. That should have been green, not red. Oh, well. Um, what do we got there? The court reporter issue has been explained in a television issue. Storm and a teacup and other nonsense. Yep. Do you know much about the laws surrounding moving to Australia from another British Commonwealth? Can you do a stream on that if you do? Um, yeah, look, that's fine. I can certainly um, do that. Um, I'm pretty sure you're in Canada, aren't you? Because um, I've actually had one or two clients myself that have um, previously been Canadian citizens who, I mean, look, to be, to be frank, they... Um, I did, <laughs> let's be honest. Um, but yes, I, I can certainly look into that and um, do a stream on it. There's no issue. Um, from this movie. Smash the like to help with the algorithm. Yep, if you could, that'd be very much appreciated. <laughs> yes, I am. I live in the same city as Runkle. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Okay, um, where are we? All right, so the, the particulars on which the defendant relied and the claimant's reply. So basically, these are the these are snippets from the defense that um, excuse me that the son put out, and basically how Johnny's team responded to them. So um, 
the son basically said that Johnny and Miss Heard began living together in or about 2012. Uh, they separated in 2016. Throughout the relationship, Johnny was controlling, verbally and physically abusive towards Amber, particularly when he was under the influence of drugs and alcohol. And Johnny's team basically just went back and said, in relation to the incidents alleged, it is the claimant's case that he has never hit or commended, commi committed any acts of physical violence against Miss Heard. He has never done more than grab her arms to prevent him from punching her in the face. Um, so this is where we actually get into all of the um, incidents as well. So that's... Um, I don't know how many of you would be aware, but there were basically 14 incidents that were raised as part of the court case in the UK. And he basically found that 12 of them were due to be substantially true. I very much disagree with that, but, you know, I wasn't the judge on the case. And I, as I've said, I'm still fairly confident there was a significant amount of bias. Um, so for the first one, which was in 2013 in Los Angeles, in early 2013, Miss Heard and Johnny were in Los Angeles when he first hit her. The claimant had, until that point in their relationship, been sober. It subsequently became apparent to Amber that he had probably started drinking and using drugs again around this time. During a conversation about a tattoo, Miss Heard laughed at something that he, um, Johnny had said as she thought he had made a joke. Johnny responded by repeatedly slapping Amber across the face. The third hit knocked her to the floor after hitting her. Uh, he cried, apologized, and tried to explain his behavior, saying that he snapped sometimes into something he called the monster and promised he would never do it again. Uh, in response, save that Johnny does not recall ever having had a conversation with Miss Heard about a tattoo and is therefore unable to admit or deny whether the conversation as described took place. The paragraph is denied. It is expressly denied that the claimant, so Johnny, slapped or hit Miss Heard in early 2013 as the defendants now advance their case. Johnny confined himself to drinking wine and using marijuana, having been sober from around December 2011 to August 2012. Uh, what have we got? Football season is over here. I'm so grateful to have you fill in this time slot. I'm enjoying. Oh, thanks. I'm I'm glad. Don't don't expect it too too often. I mean, it's literally 12:30 a.m. here. Um, thankfully, it's the weekend, so I can sort of do this while the family's asleep. So, uh, but you know, I'll do what I can. Um, did you see the bit from America's Fox Channel with the group of percentage? Five. Um, no, look, I didn't, but I will star that to remind me so that I can have a look. What about the dirty carpet? Surprisingly, the dirty carpet does not make any sort of appearance in this in this one. Good morning from California. Good morning. Sorry, I'm occasionally having to do that because I am, I'm still, as I said, I'm still getting over cold. Um, so the painting incident. So this was in relation to Tash. Uh, I can never pronounce her name right. Uh, Amber Heard's previous wife, the paintings that she had. Apparently, Johnny. Uh, what about the bee? No, the bee does not make an appearance either, surprisingly. Um, and if Kurt's watch watching, neither do any fish. Um, on or about 8 March 2013, Miss Heard and Johnny were in her home in Los Angeles. Johnny was getting drunk and high on drugs and angry that Miss Heard had hung up a painting given to her by someone she had formerly dated. At one point during the incident, which went on overnight and into the following day, Johnny tried to set fire to the painting. Um, Johnny hit Amber so hard that blood from her lip ended up on the wall. At various points, Johnny grabbed Amber hard, shook her and shoved her into a wall. Someone asked her sister to come over to try and intervene with Johnny, which she did, and he was subsequently uh, he subsequently sent Miss Heard a text message referring to that evening as a disco bloodbath and a hideous moment. Uh, oh, knocked off balance, 938. Uh, she drove him to drugs and alcohol with a behavior. Look, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you. I, I don't think it's 
that out, outlandish, honestly. Um, the Fox show is called The Five. Okay, I'll have a look. Laura C. G'day. How did you try and set fire to the painting? Never heard about that. From what I understand, it was a lighter, and he actually he'd flipped the painting over, so he was trying to burn it from the back of the canvas. Honestly, when we get to the other bit about the paintings, it's so much funnier. Well, when I say funny, it, it's, you know, um, in relation to it, that does not recall whether or not he was on the, at her home. The second sentence is denied. The signed painting by Miss Hurd's former wife, Tassia Van Rie, was hanging by Miss Hurd's bed. On the date that he cannot recall, he asked Amber as a courtesy if she would remove the painting to somewhere else. Uh, he accepted that her... Extreme reaction to his request did continue into the following day. He did not attempt to set fire to the painting either on or the morning after the alleged incident or at all. It's sort of debatable as to whether or not he actually did that. There's a little bit of evidence for that one. Um, he denied that he hit, grabbed or shake, shook or shoved her into a wall. Um, and he didn't recall uh, Whitney ever being to come over. Uh, it's admitted that he did exchange texts with her on the 12th of March, 2013. Uh, the words were used to placate her, and, deny and it is denied that the texts relate to any alleged physical abuse. Uh, the third incident in Hicksville in June 2013, Amber and Johnny were at Hicksville with a group including Rocky Pennington, Christina Sexton, Kelly Sue, Nathan Holmes, and Miss Heard's sister. Uh, Johnny was apparently taking drugs. When Kelly Sue hugged or touched Miss Heard, Johnny became enraged and jealous, grabbed Kelly Sue's wrist, and threatened to threatened to hurt her. Uh, sorry, threatened and hurt her. Johnny then threw glasses at Amber, smashed the glass, ripped her dress, and caused damage to the cabin in which they were staying. Further details of this incident are contained in the confidential report. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. How much of that was accurate? As to the paragraph, it's admitted that he was in Hicksville. Uh, it was further admitted that he took mushrooms and alcohol. For the uh, Miss Heard and her friends also took mushrooms, alcohol, along with MDMA. The MDMA becomes a bit of a sticking point because she actually, further on, um, she completely denies using the MDMA, MDMA aside from on a specific occasion. So... You know, again, this is uh, part of where we might get it for the perjury charges, given that um, what's come out in the current case as well. Um, so Johnny did not know the girl that the defendants refer to as being Kelly Sue. It is admitted that the girl was touching Miss Heard, but that it was in an extremely sexual manner. It is denied that Johnny became enraged, grabbed a wrist, threatened or hurt her in any way. Um, Johnny did speak to the girl to explain that while he understood she was high, she should stop touching Amber in such a sexual manner. It's denied that Johnny threw or smashed glasses or ripped Amber's dress. The claimant did knock a wall sconce with his hand in the cabin following an extended barrage of loud and nasty verbal abuse by Amber. Johnny approached the person managing the Hicksville site the following morning to address replacing the wall sconce, which was arranged without issue. Johnny's position as to the new alleged incidents raised in the confidential schedule are contained in the confidential reply. Yeah, well, I'm not sure we'll get to actually see that. Um, on or about 24 May 2014, Amber and Johnny were traveling on a private airplane from Boston to L.A., after drinking heavily, Johnny threw objects at Amber, causing her to retreat to a different seat. Johnny then provocatively pushed a chair at her as she walked by and yelled at her and taunted her. Um, where are we? All right, finally caught alive. Hey, Lauren. Uh, yeah, be more coffee. <laughs> Fair enough. I would have opened a window and threw the painting out onto the street, told her to go get it, then change the locks while she was out there getting it. Well, to be fair, this was her house. This is while she was still living a, in uh, something avenue in Orange County. So don't know that that necessarily would have worked, but we'll certainly see. 
um, confidential equals body cavity search. Uh, no, so basically what they did in this case was, in, to, in addition to the statement of claim, the defense and the reply to the defense, both parties also um, filed um, confidential documents, which were not made open to the public. So the judge reviewed them, but the details of it are not included anywhere um, because apparently it just was far too um, personal and or graphic. So. Oh, my nose is killing me. Uh, really. So it's true that the wall sconce is the only thing that was messed up. At, at Hicksville? Yes, I believe so, yeah. How do you push a chair at someone on an aeroplane? You genuinely, you generally can't. I mean, look, this was a, on a private aeroplane, so I don't know, maybe they've got... No, because even that doesn't make sense. You're not going to have, like, a, a wheelie chair on a plane. That's just ridiculous. Seems to be another... Assistant statement by JD. Yeah, unsecured chair on a plane. Please explain how an aeroplane seat was able to be thrown. Is he the Incredible Hulk? Or... <laughs> Wouldn't it be bolted down? Security guard provided a diagram and statement saying that that never happened. Yeah, well, makes sense. Um, really... he, the, he apparently then slapped Amber in the face. When she stood up, he kicked her in the back, causing her to fall over. Now, that's the one where I, I believe he playfully tapped her with his, with his foot. Um, I, you know, if he was drunk, I can kind of see someone doing that. I'm not in any way trying to um, condone it. I'm just thinking that, you know, I, I can see a bloke doing something stupid like that. I know, just a tip. You're reading as if to yourself. I feel much more engaged if you read it out loud to audience as if we aren't reading along with you. Thanks for going through the UK case. No, look, that, I, I completely understand that, Pamela. I'm just trying to do what I can um, simply because um, my brain's not working 100%. So I'm, I'm, I promise I'm trying to read out as much as I can, um, but picking out the bits and pieces that are important because this is page nine of 109. So... Um, just trying to get through as much as I can before I decide that it's um, time to go to bed because, you know, it's 20 to 1 here. Um, someone analysed the recording that she submitted and said that it was him on the... Yes. yes, and there is something about that in here as well. We'll get to that too. Um, on or about 24 May 2014... Oh, I've already read that. Uh kicked her in the back. The claimant threw his boot at her while she was on the ground. The claimant continued to scream obscenities until he went to the bathroom of the aeroplane and passed out. Shortly afterwards, on May 25, the claimant was apologetic and appalled at his behaviour during the flight and cried when his assistant told him he had kicked Miss Heard. He sent Miss Heard a text message admitting, once again, I find myself in a place of shame and regret. Of course, I am sorry. I will never do it again. My illness somehow crept up and grabbed me. I feel so bad for letting you down. I, I I don't know about any of you, but I don't really see that that's any sort of admission to anything in anything particular. I mean, he could have easily been saying that it was just that he was feeling bad about being drunk or whatever. I don't think that it's, you know, him admitting to much of anything at all, really. Uh, save save that the first sentence is admitted, paragraph 8A3 is denied. Specifically, it is denied that Johnny behaved in, in any of the ways alleged during the flight on 24 May 2014. The claimant and Miss Heard were seated at, at the central table in the cabin. Uh, as Johnny was drawing sketches in his notebook, she began to harangue him. This quickly progressed to the continuous verbal barrage on her part with which the claimant, so Johnny, did not engage, but continued sketching. He must really like his drawings, because I know that there was something about he was doing that um, during the trial as well. Um, in the hope of calming her, he stretched out his leg to playfully tap her on the bottom with his foot, but did not reach her. She took great offence at this harmless act and continued to verbally berate him. 
It is denied that Johnny slapped Amber in the face at all. Eventually, Stephen Judas and Jerry Judge intervened to calm Amber down, and the flight continued to LA without incident. He took a pillow into the bathroom, locked the door, and slept on the floor with a pillow. The first sentence of paragraph 8A4 is denied. Paragraph 2.2C above is repeated. It is admitted that Stephen Judas had a text exchange with Amber on the 25th of May 2014, in which he said that Johnny had cried when he'd been told that he had kicked Miss Heard. However, Mr. Judas only used this word because it was a word Miss Heard had used and he wished to mollify her as to as was Johnny's specific instruction. It was not because he had, in fact, kicked Amber. As to the second sentence, it is admitted that the claimant sent Miss Heard a text message containing the words quoted therein, but it is denied that the text message amounted to an admission that he'd behaved in the way alleged. Um, all right, double-check some of these chats. Recording sound, yeah, sounds exactly like the fan in the background on his island, yep. Right, so if we were past that, how exactly was he moaning and groaning like that on the recording? Exactly. Probably just more placating. Exactly. Yeah, I thought it was apologies for being drunk. Yeah. Saw something where the assistant said Johnny told him to appease Amber in any way he could, so he sent that text message. Yeah, and that's, that seems to have been the case. Um. At Harley, that's what a used person does. Yeah, just trying to placate people and keep everyone happy, basically. Probably sounds like it really happened. JD has ADHD. His drawing helps him concentrate. No, fair enough. Do you think she might just have wanted a sparring partner? Um, look, I'm not really sure. I think that maybe, for lack of a better term, given her upbringing, it might be that her own idea of what a relationship is supposed to be involved having to be constantly sparring with your partner. I would hope not, but, you know. Um, where are we? Incident 5, Bahamas. On or around 17 August 2014, Amber and Johnny were in the Bahamas on a trip to try and help Johnny reduce his dependency on prescription painkillers and other drugs. During this trip, Johnny had several manic episodes requiring medical attention, as a result of which Dr. David Kipper, Johnny's private doctor, was flown to help to assist. Johnny became angry and kicked and pushed Amber to the ground, slapped her with an open hand and grabbed her by the hair. During this attack, he kicked a door so hard that it splintered. We will come back to that as well. Uh, the first sentence is, is admitted, say, for the purpose of the trip was to cure his dependence on painkillers and not other drugs. The second sentence is denied. Miss Hurd was only present because she had been, had insisted on going on the trip and taking the place of Nathan, the claimant's assistant. So she actually replaced Nathan on the trip. Um, Johnny required 24 hour medical care and was frequently sedated because of the physically, physically painful process of withdrawal. Johnny was being treated by his nurse, but Amber intervened and withheld medicine from Johnny, causing him to have spasms and withdrawals. As a result, Dr. Kipper was flown in to attend on Johnny, and they returned earlier to Los Angeles than planned. Johnny then asked Amber to leave him alone and paid for a suite for her and her friends at the Beverly Hills Hotel for five days so he could recover undisturbed. Johnny did not assault Miss Heard, nor did he kick or splinter a door. The photograph that Miss Heard presented, which is purported to be a damaged door from the property in the Bahamas, is in fact a door from one of Johnny's properties in Los Angeles. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll get to that as well. She um she tried to include various bits of um, evidence that were clearly not from specific things, which is quite interesting. Uh, incident 6, Los Angeles, December 2014. In Los Angeles on 17 December 2014, after Johnny had been violent towards Amber, he sent her a text message apologizing for his behavior and calling himself a fucking savage and a lunatic. Uh, as to paragraph 8A6, without prejudice to the fact that the defendants have failed to provide any particulars of the alleged violence, it is denied that he was violent towards her on 17 December, or that the text message sent on that date were an apology for any alleged violence. Uh, Tokyo... 
On or around 25 January 2015, Amber and Johnny were in a hotel room in Tokyo. Johnny supposedly shoved her, slapped her, and grabbed her by the hair. When she tried to stand up, he muscled her back onto the floor. Might be where the dirty carpet comes in again. Uh, he stood, stood over her, yelled at her, and she cried on the floor. Save that it is admitted that they were in Tokyo on or about January 2015. The entire paragraph is denied. Okay, now we come to Australia. On or around 3 March in 2015, Amber and Johnny were in Australia. Supposedly, Johnny subjected Amber to a three-day ordeal of physical assault, which left her with injuries, including a broken lip, swollen nose, cuts all over, and cuts all over her body. On the first day, there was an argument about his drug use, at which point it's claimed that Johnny took out a bag of MDMA, and she confronted him about his drug taking. Um, he argued that MDMA was not on his not allowed list, <laughs> which Amber disputed. Sorry, just keeping a track on the chats. Um, supposedly, he pushed Amber, slapped her, shoved her hard to the ground, slapped her again, and then retreated to a locked bedroom. He then supposedly stayed up all night taking eight MDMA ecstasy pills and drinking alcohol. The following morning, Johnny became physically abusive towards Amber again, uh, swallowing more pills, chasing them down with more liquor. Amber, concerned about the interaction of the various drugs he was taking, asked asked him what else he had taken that day. Uh, he supposedly grabbed her by the neck, shoved her against the fridge. He said he could crush her neck and told her how easy it would be to do so. I just don't really quite understand that. Um, if he'd supposedly been taking MDMA and alcohol, I mean, I... I don't have any interaction with ecstasy or anything like that. I, I don't know what sort of um, results it's supposed to have. I mean, presumably ecstasy on its own is a stimulant. Does anyone in the chat know? Um, During the course of the day, he hit her multiple times, shoved her and pushed her to the ground, choked her and spat in her face, then handed her a liquor bottle that he was drinking from and asked her, what are you going to do? When Miss Heard threw the bottle on the floor, he was bonded by throwing unopened glass bottles at her. Stimulant. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's a happy drug. That's what I thought. I, th I figured that it was one of the ones that you're not going to necessarily be um, raging on. It's not, it's not like he was taking... I don't know, like heroin or something like that at the time. Not that I've got any idea about that either. Um, that night, he supposedly shoved her into a ping pong table, threw bottles through window panes of a glass door, then grabbed her and turned, tore off her nightgown. Supposedly grabbed her by the neck, choked her against the refrigerator in the kitchen. Is it? Did they just say that she he did that twice? Grabbed her by the neck and held her against the fridge. So supposedly he did that twice in two days. All I know about MDMA is that when my friend took it, he was laying on the floor, petting the rug for about five hours or staring at his hand in front of a light. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, you, like, it, it, drugs affect people differently, but you wouldn't necessarily be expecting someone to turn violent if they're taking ecstasy. I mean, that's sort of the point of um, the name, I, I would assume. Um, all right, grabbed her by the neck, collar bone, slammed her against a ta tabletop countertop and strangled her. Now, let's be clear. The fridge, never heard about the fridge. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm quite surprised given that supposedly she got held up against it at least twice in this three-day period. Um, her arms and feet were slashed by broken glass on the kitchen countertop and floor. She was scared for her life and told him that you are hurting me and cutting me. Uh, supposedly ignored her and continued to hit her with the back of his one closed hand. At one point, he slammed a hard plastic telephone against a wall with his hand until it smashed. Further details of the incident are contained in the confidential schedule to the amended defense. The following morning, Miss Heard saw that the claimant had severely injured his finger, cutting off the tip and believed the injury had probably occurred while he'd been smashing the telephone. Oh, shit. Once Miss Heard had managed to a to escape from the claimant, she barricaded herself in the room. 
Following day, Miss Heard found numerous messages that the claimant had written for her around the house, on the walls, on her clothes, written in a combination of oil paint and blood from his finger. The claimant has supposedly also urinated all over the house in an attempt to write messages. Uh, save that it is admitted that Johnny and Amber were both in Australia. It's all denied. There was only one inc incident referred to below. Immediately before 8th of March, Miss Heard had a conversation with Johnny's then lawyers, Bloom Hergot, who explained that Johnny intended to enter into a postnuptial agreement. On 8th of March 2015, this caused Miss Heard to go into a prolonged and extreme rage. Johnny had been retreating from her throughout the day, seeking refuge in locked bathrooms around the house. Ultimately, Johnny who had not had a drink in over a year, sought to avoid her by going downstairs to the bar in the house. She followed at him. She followed him, screaming at him abusively. Johnny did not grab or hurt Miss Heard in any way. He did not threaten her, hold her by the hair or neck, slap her or otherwise attack her in any way as described. He simply sought to remove himself to other parts of the home consistently throughout the day. Um... Claim it poor, Johnny poured himself a number of glasses of vodka and drank them. She took the bottle and threw it at the claimant's head, narrowly missing him. The bottle flew past his head, smashing into the mirror and bottles behind him. He poured and had another drink of vodka. She then took another bottle and threw it at him. His hand, which was resting on the marble top of the bar, was hit. The bottle smashed against his finger, severing the top of his finger and fracturing multiple bones in it. Miss Heard then put a cigarette out on his right cheek. Uh, Johnny was first taken to the home of one of his security guards, Malcolm Connolly. His injury to his figure was assessed and considered to be too serious to be treated there. He was then taken promptly to hospital for treatment to his hand no later than 4.30 p.m. on the 8th of March. Now, that's important as well because um, Amber actually claimed that it was almost 12 hours before he got any sort of treatment for his finger, which, irrespective of what drugs or anything he's on, surely he's not going to leave that for that long. Uh, for the avoidance of doubt, it is expressly denied that he took any of the MDMA and that Miss Heard found a bag of MDMA pills or that there was a conversation about MDMA. Further incidents were uh, included in the confidential schedule. It is admitted that the claimant wrote on a mirror and the walls in blood and oil paint. He was in shock. It's denied that he urinated all over the house, as alleged. Um, all right. Before I move on to incident nine, I'll just go back, see if I missed anything in the chat. MDMA... When it first came out, it was called the date rape because it made you hot and horny. Oh, okay. Interesting. Where's the photo of the torn nightgown? Probably in the same place as all the medical reports for her cut up feet and, um, yeah. Fridge, never heard about the fridge. Retired nurse here, totally unbelievable. She did not, did not seek medical attention here. Absolutely. No, the, the way that all of this is structured and the way that she says that it all happened it's just too unbelievable to think that she wouldn't get any sort of medical attention. Absolutely no noy. Was that supposed to be no joy or does noy mean something else? Absolutely not. Ah, okay. Gotcha. He loved the rug and the light. Lol. <laughs> With him having, uh, it may make him even out. Yeah. Look, that's entirely possible. Oh, the nightgown that was given to her by one of her male friends as a wedding gift that JD tore up. Um, no, no, that, that wasn't one of her male friends. That nightgown came from Dr. Kipper, and that's why everyone was so weirded out by it. And then that was the one that got torn up and had raw meat wrapped in it and put around the house. I can kind of understand where he was going with that, but I don't know that I'd be able to explain it properly without coming across as some sort of weirdo. Later in the US, the rate with the bottle stuff was added because she always doubles down. Yeah, and she sort of tripled down in the middle of her testimony when she looked at the bottle and went, oh, yeah, that's probably the bottle. God, that was just unbelievable. Tweety. <laughs> I think the fridge story got removed because Waldman posted a receipt of when they bought it. 
a year after the claimed incident. Well, no, hang on. The incident we're talking about here is in the rented house in um, in Australia. So that that wasn't even their fridge. Sorry, have to go to sleep. All right, uh, hopefully I haven't already missed you, Jane, but night. Um, she was the only one in that bedroom as there was only one door to it. Yes, I didn't even know in the fridge then. Stevie J Raw has a bunch of info on that mansion condo. Probably occurred. The order of her acknowledging the finger damage would throw that out the window. She knew. Yeah, absolutely. There is audio with Jerry Judge on there. Yeah, look, and not only that, Jerry Judge did actually prepare um, information and and depositions and that sort of thing, which although they weren't included in the US case, were included here. Um, uh, the blood turned out to be her. Only some of the blood turned out to be her writing with red lipstick. Oh, wait, hang on. What are we talking? Which, which one are we talking about? Uh, yes, I think Dr. Kibble was the male friend. Yep. Uh, we only have... A... Yeah, look, that's a good point. So she had two fridge stories. Are you really surprised by that? I mean, honestly? The wall phone story was a lie. The house was recently sold and there's not wired for that sort of, any sort of landline. Yeah, and look, that's interesting because um, we'll come to it as well. But in the UK case, Johnny's testimony actually mentioned the phone, of all things. So did you notice the phone... The house on the Gold Coast was not even of Australian outlets. No, I didn't actually. I might go back and have a look at that. Yep, someone pointed that out. Well, we're all weirdos in one way or another. I will be the queen of weirdos. <laughs> she gave pics of fridge in UK trial, but it was not the fridge in Oz. It was of the fridge they bought in LA a year later. Yeah, okay. Um... It was a pedestal phone. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, where were we? Incident 9, Los Angeles, March 2015, the staircase incident. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting as well. In March 2015, Amber, her sister, and Johnny were all in Los Angeles. After becoming enraged, Johnny began to destroy personal property in the house, including Amber's belongings in her closet. Johnny also hit Amber hard and repeatedly. When Johnny then lunged to hit Miss Heard again, her sister stepped in place between her and tried to interrupt the fight. The claimant then turned his attention to Whitney, who was standing at the top of a flight of stairs. Johnny reached out and shoved Whitney, causing Miss Heard to believe that Johnny was about to push her sister down the stairs. Johnny grabbed Amber by the hair with one hand and hit her repeatedly in the head with the other hand. I'd like to point out... When he's supposedly hitting her repeatedly in the head, he's got one hand in her hair. The other hand is still in a cast with his re really damaged finger. Uh, where are we? Reached out. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, oh, I didn't highlight this. Uh, it's denied that Johnny destroyed the personal property as alleged. It's further denied that he was violent in any way towards Amber or, or her sister. Uh, he was attempting to leave the house. Amber tried to prevent him, berating him in a rage. Johnny summoned help from Debbie Lloyd and Travis McGiven, one of the security guards, prompting them to arrive on the scene and intervene. Uh, Amber threw a can of Red Bull at Johnny, striking him in the back. Amber then threw another object off him, which... McGiven blocked from hitting him. Mr. McGiven tried to protect Johnny by standing between him and Amber, but she lunged at him, punching him in the face with a closed fist, causing him visible swelling and injury. He did, uh, Johnny did not retaliate and simply left the premises. Um, what do we got? Those outlets on the bedside table photo were outlets specific to the UK. Interesting. 81 pitch. Only 81 in the chat and only three likes. Come on, people. Slash. Look, if you could, I'd really appreciate it. Um, when is Cafe? Oh, uh, oh, 
were they? Wasn't sure if they were European or American. Um, probably have to go back and have a look at the camera, uh, go and have a look at the um, picture, to be honest. And the third hand was throwing a can. Yeah, exactly. I see 94 likes, refresh your page. Okay, fair enough. Um, but that's all right. Um, yeah, and look, if, if you can, just, you know, if, if at all possible, spread the word that I'm trying to do as much of this as I can. I've actually decided what I'm going to do if I actually get to the monetization phase. Um, unlike other people that are necessarily going to be keeping money, if people are ever willing to give me super chats or anything like that, I've decided that I'm going to have the money set aside to put towards my pro bono practice so that I can do what I can to help other people that are in need and I can still keep the lights on. So um, if we, if I ever do get to that point, it'll be great because I'll be able to help more people, which I'll be very happy about. Um, where are we? Um You have to use visuals uh, to try and match up with their story, and it doesn't work. You know, exactly. Um, this fight initially started with a Amber rampaging in jealousy regarding another woman. She was after him, not him after her. Yeah, fair enough. Better. Uh, cheers. Um, where are we? Incident 10. In August 2015, Ms. Hurd and the claimant were traveling on the Eastern Oriental train in Southeast Asia. Johnny is claimed to have picked a fight with Amber, hit her, pushed her against a wall, grasping her throat and holding her there, causing her to fear for her life. Um, has anyone noticed that she has this sort of similar strain to how she... Um, characterizes these incidents. I mean, in almost every one she's saying that she was choked or grabbed by the throat or something along those lines. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I'm surprised that this Orient Express story doesn't involve a fridge. Um, where are we? That's because humans in general, for instance, that photo that she tried to say they were taken in different lighting, you don't have to have, see they're identical. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, 104 likes, lovely. Sent another DM, did you and Detective Seeds catch up? Uh, no, look, we haven't as of yet. I've um, I've had a pretty full-on week, but I'm hoping that um, once I can actually get some spare time aside from, you know, reading through all this, that I'll um, be able to reach out and hopefully get in touch. Um, classic BPD. Yeah. You're amazing. Just like, just like, I uh, like twice. Oh, okay. Um, she's full of crap. If you get choked, you have bruises on your neck. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your neck's like one of the most sensitive areas and the bruises show up really easily. I mean, I, I, I don't know about how many of you would be saying it, but, um, you know, when you get hickeys and that sort of thing, they don't go away too quickly either. Uh, we so appreciate you giving up your Saturday to read and explain this entire thing. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, look, my pleasure. But as I said, we're currently on page 13 of 109, so don't be surprised if I have to do a follow-up. PDSM. <laughs> Yep, so she could try and keep track of all the lies. Yeah. Um, where is your practice? Um, so I actually practice in Melbourne and southwest Victoria. I've got offices in the western suburbs of Melbourne and uh, I have a visiting office in the Melbourne CBD. I also have my regional office in Camperdown, Victoria. And another, they like bruises, you can cover them up. Cover them up, better graphics, a scarf. Yeah, no, fair enough. No wonder the UK judge retired after this case. Yeah, look, I think it was probably his swan song so that he wouldn't go up for um, ethical violations. But that, again, that's my opinion. Wish I could like... Uh... No, no, that's fine. Um, but I, I, I kind of, I got the gist of what you were saying. They also swell up too. Can't cover them up, sorry. 
A rough collar on the neck skin causes more redness than I've seen on her whole neck. Yes. This is a dumpster fire of a woman blaming the whole world for her problems. The whole world can see she's a liar. Anyone who's actually gone through DV is outraged at what she did. Yep. At Lauren, man, it took me almost a week to get one hickey when I was younger. I just butchered my chat. I apologize. Oh, good, Lauren. Don't stress. Um, where are we? Um... Yeah, so Save That has admitted that they were traveling on the train together. He denies that, that any of that took place. And I'm pretty sure that's the instance where he he had the photo of Shiner as well. Um, incident 11. On 26 November 2015, they were in Los Angeles. He supposedly ripped her shirt and threw her around the room. He then threw a wine glass and a heavy glass decanter at her, which missed her. He also pushed her, causing her to fall over the back of the lounge chair and hit her head against a brick wall, which resulted in a lump at the back of her head and a split lip. Save that it is admitted that they were in Los Angeles. That's completely denied. I call major bullshit on that as well. She fell backwards and hit the back of her head on a brick wall. Now, I've always been fucking paranoid because ever since I was younger, I don't know how many would remember, but Liam Neeson... Um, uh, most of you would know him from movies like Taken or as um, as the bad guy from uh, Batman Begins. My main thing that I knew him from was Qui-Gon Jinn in The Phantom Menace. That was the main thing that I've always known him as. When I was younger and I heard that he and his wife went on that skiing trip and that she slipped over, smacked her head on ice, um, and she supposedly was fine and then died 24 hours later because of it, that has stuck with me so badly for my entire life that I am absolutely paranoid when it comes to any sort of head injury. So if, if she's fallen backwards and hit her head on bricks, I'm calling absolute bullshit that she didn't get any sort of medical treatment or medical reports. <laughs> so many in the US. Uh, well, yeah, look, I'll, um, once I've done the video, I'll put out a tweet referencing it if anyone wants to retweet it to get it out there. Um, better graphics, a scarf, whatever that means. It, surprisingly, I actually understood that. Now, I'm not sure if that's just because I'm tired, but um, yeah, I, I understood that it was better to hide it with a, um, a scarf than anything else. Um, so, so insulting that they accused JD of photoshopping the train photo. Yeah, I agree. Her fictional account is like a crappy movie sc screenplay. Yep. I wish JD's team had made a visual timeline, including photos available of all the events in dispute to dispute AH's claims. I just noticed that her AH can also mean... <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Please don't make me laugh. I'm going to cough. <laughs> um, did anyone else see her picking at her lips during the trial? She's got a bad habit of doing that, and she always has a split lip. Yes, that, that was also brought up, and I very much noticed that myself. Yes, it was also so very sad when Natasha died. Oh, right, yes. Closed head injuries are deadly. Public pics show no bruises, no swelling, no marks whatsoever. Egads, what a crock of beans that people blindly believed. Yep. Head injuries are nasty. I've hit my head on ice, fell back ice skating. Oh, geez. Sorry to hear that. Uh, yeah. Mod for seeds and some others if you need a moderator. Happy to help. Um, I appreciate the Lady Dingo. Um Kiwi think has actually got first dibs on it because otherwise he's just going to keep annoying me in the chat. He's actually already contacting me on my phone because he's realized I'm live without letting him know beforehand. Um, but if the, once things pick up and I need more than one, you're second on the list. Uh, I was very upset with this circumstance. Yeah. Alpine skiing head injuries. So Amber is full of shit. I'll take your word for it. Wait, I'm trying. Alpine skiing here is so often delayed, so Amber is full of shit. 
No, well, I, I wasn't saying that Amber had any sort of um, skiing injuries. I was saying that um, Natasha Neeson did. Le- <sighs> I was saying that someone else had a skiing accident. Natasha Richards' circumstances and death stays with me when I hear about head injuries. Yeah. That's why I freak out any time I hear that my if um if I think my little girl's fallen over or something at daycare or whatever, and it's just she's also on medication that dehydrates her. Yeah, well, it's probably not helping. As a DV survivor, AH and her lawyers pissed me off. Also, if AH had a broken bottle in her hospital for sure, abso friggin' lootly. If he's grabbing her on the regular, she'd have bruises on the arms. It's hard to cover those up. Yep, absolutely. Remember too, though, people who abuse illegal substances also get those marks on their lips as well as their face. True. My lips are dry and split worse than that from mild stimulant meds. She's down in coke on top of, top of ecstasy. If anyone needs info on concussions, I've got experience. Yes, her lip picking while on the stand at the defense defense table. Yep. Don't break Hayden like we do, Joe. Yeah. Um, no. Look. To be fair, I, I I was pretty involved in breaking Joe the last time anyway, so I suppose a certain amount of turnabouts fair game. Um, head stomps, as we know about. It, okay, it was horrible to view. Yeah. Actually, that's on my list of things to cover over as well. Um, I never could figure out the bottle story. She claims it was broken when he used it, but the photo shows a fully intact bottle. Yeah, so she claimed that when it happened, it was with a broken bottle, but the photo that she saw during the trial and she recognized the type of bottle, the photo itself was of an intact bottle. Now, I don't think she ever made the jump between that's the that's the exact bottle that he used or if it was just that that's the exact same type and beverage bottle that was used. So... But anyway, um, where are we? 12, December 2015. On 15th of December 2015, Miss Heard and the claimant were in their penthouse in Los Angeles. Johnny threw another decanter at her, knocked items around the room, punched the wall, slapped her hard, grabbed her by the hair, and dragged her through the apartment. In the process, he pulled large chunks of hair and scalp off of her head. Um, She tried to escape the violence by going upstairs where he followed her, hit her in the back of the head, again grabbed her by the hair, then dragged her by the hair up the last few steps, as if. At the top of the stairs, he shoved her twice, which made her fear that she would fall. Okay, so we've got another issue with the stairs. Um, She told him that he had broken her wrist in an attempt to get him to stop. Okay, so she's basically just admitted that she lied in the middle of an argument, but anyway. Um, Johnny repeatedly hit her, knocked her to the floor. Each time she was knocked down, she stood back up. He responded by saying, oh, you think you're a fucking tough guy. Does anyone actually think that Johnny would use those words? He then supposedly headbutted her in the face, bashing her nose, which immediately began bleeding and causing her searing pain. Bullshit. When a few days later on December 20th, uh, Amber said to Johnny, you headbutted me. He responded, I just gave you a little knock with my head. Johnny then said what a fuck up he was and left the room. Later during the evening of 15 December, he told her, she told him, sorry, that she wanted to leave him and that she would call the police if he ever touched her again. When she then began to walk away towards the guest apartment, Johnny pushed her. He then grabbed her and pulled her from one room to the next, gripping her by the hair. It's all about the hair. It's all about the hair. Um... By the time he dragged her into the upstairs office, she told him that she was leaving him and she could not put up not put up with his behavior any longer. He reacted by grabbing her by the throat, again with the throat, pushing her down on the ground and punching her in the back of the head. Hang on, is this... Yeah, okay, again, calling bullshit. Headbutt supposedly damaged her nose and is pouring blood. 
and now she's supposedly face down on the ground having her head smashed into the carpet. If her nose wasn't broken to begin with, it sure as shit was going to be after that. Not to mention there would be blood stains on the floor and all sorts of crap. Uh, uh, he dragged her into the upstairs, uh, reacted by grabbing her, pushing her down, punching her. He then grabbed her by the hair, slamming her, slapped her in the face. So apparently he's now, so despite the fact that she's face down, he's now pulled her up, slapped her in the face, screamed at her that I'm going to fucking kill you, I'll fucking kill you, you hear me, or similar words. Uh, I may have to take a two minute break guys. My four year old has just gotten up out of her bed. I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. Um, where were we? I'll fucking kill you, I'll fucking kill you, you hear me. Um, oh, actually, I should probably close that door. <clears throat> okay, the fight continued onto a bed. Uh, Johnny got on top of her, placed a knee on her back and the other foot on the bed frame while repeatedly punching her in the head. <sighs> Quite athletic. Um... Apparently he was screaming, I fucking hate you, over and over again. The bed frame splintered under the weight of the pressure of the claimant's boot. Oh, shit. Excuse me. Uh, he hit Miss Hurd with his closed fists, pushed her face... So she's doing somersaults or rolling over repeatedly in, in this instance, because... At one point, he's hitting her in the face, then her face is pushed into the mattress, and he's pulling hair, chunks of hair out. Um, and supposedly, she suffered severe headaches and other pain for at least a week after the incident. During the incident, he supposedly wrote a message on the kitchen counter topping gold pens saying, why be a fraud? All is such bullshit. Got anything that I missed in the chats? So far, broken wrist, aren't you? Yep. Alpine skiing coach. Here. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, Natasha's head injury was a delayed slow brain bleed de death, which means that Amber's claimed brick head injury is bullshit. Yep. Fair enough. Thank you for explaining that. I very much appreciate it. No. In the end, if that bottle story is true and she really did feel it hitting her pelvis, it makes his overused flappy fish market statement true. <sighs> what did my mum used to say? Hot dog down a hallway. <sighs> she tried to get away and he chased after her. 
I thought he was a baby because he always ran from the fight. Yeah, exactly. Um, the hair on the floor she used as evidence looks cut. I'll have to go and have a look. I don't remember a broken wrist. No, see, that's just it. She claimed that there was a broken wrist. It never actually was, supposedly. He, she just used it as an, ex as an example to try and get him to stop doing what he was doing. I really want to know how someone you how someone slaps you in the face and you have to turn to look at them and tell them that they just slapped you. Does he have rubber arms to reach around the slap? Yeah, and look, there are some fucking funny TikToks going around. It's it's literally, you know, someone walks into the room, they get slapped, and then they turn and they're looking completely other, the other way, and they go, "You just slapped me." That's fucking hilarious. Woke up, came and saw Hayden for my internet fix. Lovely. Um, her abuse came, sounded like they're taking from various movies. Yes, they very much do. None of it makes any sense. No, no, it does not. Anyone else think those were just Amber's elaborate sexual fantasy shit? <laughs> no comment. A story about the black eyes and seeing nothing was stolen directly from Rihanna's interview about her diffuse abuse from 2020 with Barbara Walters 20, uh, 12 years ago. Oh, is that right? Well, I call her the gong girl. Too many things sound like that movie. Yeah. <laughs> the comparison's hilarious. Sounds like she would have had a bald spot if you put... Yeah, and you, um, when we get to it later on, you'll see that um, one of the stylists supposedly um, helped to cover a bald spot, but there was never anything that anyone could actually prove aside from that. Especially the trailer story, choking, ripping clothes... Short hair, nowhere near her hair length, especially full from the scalp. No roots either. Yeah, and no, like, bloody matter or anything, like, off the off the roots. On the stand in the US, she did say she didn't need to seek medical attention, actually told the truth for once. Yeah, it's about the only kernel of truth she probably did say. She describes things that would cause major damage, but she showed no injuries. Exactly. The problem with telling a lie is that you don't... You don't have the detail of the event to back it up with you if it was real, hence why it wouldn't make sense. Yep. I believe she was abused. I believe she was abused, but not by Johnny. She just put it all on Johnny. So this is from our survivor. So yeah, project projection basically. There was evidence of the Australian incident that was only seen by the judge. Could could have been the bottle incident. Um, saying she never mentioned the bottle till recently isn't necessarily true. Um, look, that's possible given that the, given that this, the UK case had, um, um, had the confidential redacted schedules. I don't necessarily think that that's accurate. I think that if that, um, if that had been mentioned anywhere, I think that she probably would have went for the shock and awe value, if I'm honest. Night, Laura. Um, we entertain ourselves while you're gone. Yeah, I can see that. One of the law tube lawyers, I can't recall, had a hair and makeup artist on, and she showed that in all likelihood, the hair on the carpet was a hair extension. Is that right? Poppy Fisher. Hey, there he is. Lol, hot dog down a hallway. Yeah, that's what I thought when I first heard it. Um... It's also being satisfied. <laughs> well, I'm happy I could help. I, I did notice it had been a little bit quiet today as well. I mean, I know that it's, um, I know Joe's got his uh, Jewish holiday and that sort of thing, but I did actually notice that there weren't too many others that were streaming at the moment. So, uh, yeah. All right, where are we? Uh, moving on. Uh, where are we? Save for the fact that the first sentence is admitted. Everything else is denied. Miss Heard fabricated the alleged violence and as part of the pretense, falsely claimed that the blonde hair on the floor was her hair that had been pulled out by Johnny. The only violence committed on that date was by Amber. She violently attacked Johnny, leaving him with scratches and swelling around the face. The day after the alleged incident, she had no visible injuries on her face. The birthday incident on 21st of April, 2016, 
Uh, Amber had her birthday celebration with friends at the couple's property at 849 South Broadway, Los Angeles, the South Broadway apartment. Johnny arrived, drunk and high on drugs. After the guests had left, Johnny and Amber had a conversation about his absence from the celebration, which apparently deteriorated into an argument. He then threw a magnum-sized bottle of champagne at her, which missed and hit a wall, and then he threw a glass of wine over her, which smashed. He then grabbed her by the shoulders, pushed her onto a bed, and blocked the bedroom door when she tried to leave. He then grabbed her by the hair again, violently shoved her to the floor again. Johnny screamed at and threatened Amber, taunting her to stand up and saying, you really think you're that tough, huh? tough guy. Again, strikingly similar to the allegation she made earlier. And similar words. Look, that's not to say that people aren't going to be going through... Um, um, so, like, I, I, I don't, I'm not trying to be disparaging to legitimate survivors or anything like that. Um, I think it's purely the case of... I feel like she's reiterating the same details because she's making it easier so she doesn't get caught up in a lie, which she seems to have done anyway. Um, where are we? She eventually escaped from the bedroom and walked through the office, at which point he pushed her and grabbed her by the back of the hair. I mean, he's, he's, he's spent so much time pushing her and grabbing her by the hair. I'm surprised she's not bald at this stage. Um, after he stormed out of the apartment, tossing aside and smashing items as he left, he, he left a note which said, happy fucking birthday. Save that it is admitted and advised that the, claimed, that the claimant Johnny arrived at the party just under two hours late. Having been at a meeting with his recently hired business manager and his accountants, the second sentence is denied. Earlier that day, Johnny had told Amber that it was an important meeting, and during the meeting itself, he'd been texting Amber to let her know that he was likely not going to get out of it until far later than the birthday dinner was scheduled to start. Johnny was not drunk or high on drugs. He was shocked from what he had learnt at the meeting about his business affairs, despite Johnny having told the reason why he was unable to make the birthday dinner on time and kept her up to date by text. Amber was still cold towards him when he arrived. I'm lurking backstage, by the way, Long. Oh, there's a shocker. Um, have you seen the PSA? Good Lord, you did. Uh, yes, I have. The Both the short one and the eight-minute one. Very, de very decent work. By the way, thank you for giving me a stream to paint my flamers too today. Yeah, no, no worries. And boy, yes, it was glorious. Human hair pulled out would have roots attached. Otherwise, the picture of hair was from a hairbrush or dog hair. Yep. I was on the live stream, it was taken from, and as an abuse survivor, Rob brought a tear to my eye. We need to share it more. Yep, yes, the same one. The shorter pieces of hair in the picture had been scissor cut. In her deposition in the UK, you can see her hair is very, very thin. She wears hair pieces or extensions. The abusers always make it your fault. You made me do it. My ex-husband used words like Amber. Justice for Johnny was justice for survivors. I'm happy to hear that it brought some sort of justice to people. I'm actually really happy to hear that. Um, uh, as to the third and fourth center, uh, after the guests had left, Amber began criticizing Johnny for being late. He got into bed and began reading, uh, and Amber, who had been drinking heavily, became aggressive and violent towards him, punching him twice in the face as he lay in bed. Uh, this incident, instance is later referred to in this case as the Haymaker incident. Um, he stood up and asked if she wanted to hit him again. She did so, punching him twice in the face. He defended himself by grabbing her arms to stop her from punching him and told her to stop. He pushed her away from him onto the bed and told her he was leaving and she should not follow him. Johnny called Sean Bett who was stationed in the penthouse apartment next door and asked to be driven home, explaining that 
Amber was at it again, or words to that effect. Johnny was taken by Mr. Bet to his house in West Hollywood. Johnny did not toss aside or smash items as he left. Mr. Bet took a photo of the injury to Johnny's face. The fifth and sixth sentences of the paragraph in its entirety are denied, save that he cannot recall whether or not he left the note saying happy fucking birthday. The following morning, Miss Heard, or possibly one of her, her friends, defecated in Johnny and Amber's bed. Uh, on May 12th, 2016, Amber told the estate manager, Mr. Murphy, that leaving the feces in the bed had just been a harmless prank, thereby effectively acknowledging that she had been responsible. It was at that point that Johnny resolved to divorce her. Uh, incident 14. Now, I'm pretty sure this, let me just double check. I'm pretty sure 14 is the last one before we start actually getting into the substantial stuff. Yep, okay. Okay, so 21st of, I still can't believe she blamed the dog. Yeah, look, neither can I. Um, especially when you actually see the size of the dogs. I mean, how many, how many people have actually seen what the dogs look like? Actually, while we're at it, is there anyone that hasn't seen, um, the damage that was done to Johnny's finger? Um, actually, I think probably everyone saw that, didn't they? Because it was brought up as part of the main case. Um. Next time she saw Johnny was on the 21st of May. He arrived at the South Broadway apartment at around 7.15 p.m. He was drunk and high. Amber was present together with Elizabeth Mars, Rocky Pennington, and Miss Pennington's fiancé. Joshua Drew, who were in neighbouring penthouse apartments in the same building at the time of Johnny's arrival. Rocky and... Josh Drew lived in a neighbouring apartment and Miss Pennington kept a key to the South Broadway apartment. During the conversation with Amber, Johnny became very angry. Amber tried to calm him down by telephoning one of his trusted employees and asking him to intervene, but this was unsuccessful. Don't know how accurate that is. Uh, Johnny became increasingly enraged. She became concerned for her safety and texted Miss Pennington, who was by now in her apartment next door, asking her to come back over. Claimant became increasingly. Uh, yeah. um, Johnny insisted that Miss Heard call their friend Io Till It Right, which Miss Heard attempted to do. He ripped the phone from her hand and began screaming profanities and insults. Johnny then tossed the phone away and stormed upstairs. She picked it up and Io Till It Right yelled over the phone that she needed to get out of the house. After a short period upstairs, Johnny came back downstairs, then grabbed the phone again and this time threw it at Miss Heard, striking her cheek and eye. Bullshit! Miss Heard sustained an injury to her right eye. Miss Pennington and or Mr. Drew subsequently took photographs of the injury as well as items in which the claimant smashed. Miss Heard covered her face and was crying with pain. Johnny charged at her. He forcibly pulled back her hair and she attempted to get as she get up at and she attempted to get up from the sofa. Amber called out to call 911, hoping that this would be heard by Io Till It Right, who was still on the phone. The claimant shouted, I hit your eye. I hit your eye, huh? Let me see your eye. Let me see. Let me see your eye. What if I pulled your hair back and let's see how, how hard I hit you? He pulled Amber's hair, struck her and violently grabbed her face. He then started to slap, shake and yank Amber around the room while she continued to scream. Rocky entered the flat, at which point Amber escaped from his grasp and moved to the other side of the room. Mildly convenient. Uh, Johnny charged at her again. Rocky ran in between them, extending her arms to separate them and begging him to stop. Johnny then grabbed Miss Pennington's arms and continued to yell obscenities. Amber then retre retreated to the couch. Rocky went over and covered her in a protect protective posture. Johnny picked up a mag magnum-sized bottle, again with the magnum-sized champagne bottle, 
and began drinking out of it and swinging it around, smashing everything he could. The uh, Johnny then moved closer and closer to Amber, acting in a threatening manner. By this time, the members of his security team, including Jerry, Jerry Judge, had entered the flat. Amber yelled at Mr. Judge to help her and, that, and said that if he hit her again, she would call the police. Mr. Judge said, boss, please. Johnny continued screaming and breaking things before leaving the apartment. As the claimant walked down the hallway, he smashed other items, kicked a hole in a door. He went into an adjoining apartment, which Miss Heard used as an office, painting studio and closet, where Miss Heard where Miss Heard heard him smashing further items and screaming. Mr. Drew and Miss Pennington then took Miss Heard to their apartment to keep her safe from Johnny. Following the incident, she filed for the petition for dissolution of marriage and on 27 May 2016 issued an application for a domestic violence restraining order against Johnny. She sought an order preventing him from contacting her or harassing her, attacking, striking, threatening, hitting, following, stalking, molesting, keeping under surveillance, impersonating or blocking her movements, as well as disturbing the peace or destroying her property. She also sought an order requiring that he attend 52 weeks of anger management courses. Damn, you're a chatty bunch, aren't you? Um, all right, pulling your hair sounds like a twisted part of a parent abusing a child, yanking a smaller person by the hair. Yep. Um, there is a content creator on YouTube that is a DV therapist. I watched a few of her videos on Amber Heard, and she compared AH to Chris Watts. I still cannot believe she blamed the dog. Yep. Her channel is Live of Use Free if you want to look her up and see the vids she did on AH. Um, yeah, certainly something to have a look at. Wendy, I have two starred chats, and I'm pretty sure at the moment... Oh, no, one's from more. Sorry. Uh, where are we? Uh, the, dog in the, the dog in the video was tiny. The size of the poop would have been a German Shepherd. Um, well, we actually get to the testimony from the housekeeper, and not only had she dealt with the poops from these dogs in particular, she said that there was no way in hell that it was even close to coming from a even a larger dog. These are the freeloaders living in... Yes. Yep. Human German Shepherd lol. By the way, does anyone know which friend she tried to blame? I think it, um, I think it was Io. I'm actually, I'm, I'm fairly confident because I'm pretty sure I come to that as well. Um, Dell's advocate for the moment. Some of the most massive poops I've ever seen coming out of when they were little. Yeah, fair enough. Suspect uh, some of, I suspect some of her descriptions of abuse are from her father's abuse of her and Whitney. I also think she craves physical fighting as a sign of love, trying to recreate her father's love, in my opinion. Look, you could well be right. It's, it could just be a really messed up way of trying to show affection, I suppose. Why the fuck did Io call 911 from New York City? All those people around her, and he called them from the other side of the country. Um, well, because at that point, when she called out to call 911, Rocky wasn't in the in the apartment, apparently. That's that's another thing we're going to come to. The timing, the timeline on this whole thing is very sus. Um, because he, Io apparently text Rocky before calling 911. So, but we'll get to that. Mega pint, let's go. I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a drink anyway. So the police couldn't question him probably. Look, quite possibly. But didn't Rocky say on her deposition that she never saw Johnny be physical with Amber? Yes. Yes, she did. Jerry Judge has passed away, so too, so kind of hard to ask him. Yeah, look, that is true. But as I said, he did give um, uh, declarations and depositions in relation to the divorce proceedings, um, which, I, given that they've used them here in the UK trial, I mean, I suppose that's because he was. I think that's because he was still alive at the time when that when the trial started. Um, 
but I would think that there would be the possibility to actually go and review those. I don't think those video depositions should have been allowed into court if the person giving it was not present in court to testify. Well, unfortunately, certain um, concessions have to be made. Otherwise, you know, all kinds of, there'd be all kinds of miscarriages of justice. Um, I mean, th think about a case where, I don't know, there might be a murderer, someone's in witness protection. Um, but, you know, anyway. Um, what is the part about the police arriving after the first? Where is the part about the police arriving after the first and second 911 calls? I'll get to that. That's, that's coming up in a bit as well. Um, I took pictures of Johnny's 16-year-old daughter. Yes, and that... So many kinds are wrong. Yes, that's why I was kicked out by JD. Also, abusers want to keep you away from friends and family. They don't move them in. Yes. Um, I published the images in a pro trans magazine. What was that noise in Amber Alert? No, that was my... Um, baby monitor letting me know that the battery was almost dead. But now that she's quietly snoozing alongside my wife, I'm not really fussed. Um, Rose was seriously fucked off. Yeah, I can't say I'm surprised. Both sides question, question witness interposition. About time someone did this. The UK trial is not the Shield Hood fans think it is. No, it's really not. And I... You know, I, I mean, look, we're, we're currently on page 17 out of 109, so this might become like a three or four part series, but um, we, I will get there and get, get through all of it. Um, what are we at? Two hours. Yeah, I'll probably give it another half hour and then I'll probably have to call it because it'll be 2.30 then. Um, uh, as Johnny... Uh, where are we? Following this incident, she filed the petition, sought the order preventing yeah you know, in support of her application she, she signed a declaration in which she truthfully described her ordeal at the hands of johnny as set out above and explained how she was petrified that he would re return to the south broadway apartment she said she was re she was re she required protection from johnny she described her fear that he would return to terrorize her physically and emotionally and said that she therefore needed protection of the court she said that she said there had also been previous domestic violence incidents, including a severe one in December 2015, where she feared her life was in danger. Uh, although, first sentence in 8D is admitted, although in the meantime... Yeah, so she got the TRO, she got the TRO and then she repeatedly tried to contact him directly and through his sister. Sorry, and through her sister, Whitney Heard, who pleaded for him to get back in touch with him. Second sentence is admitted, save that the claim that Johnny cannot recall the precise time he arrived at the South Broadway apartment, and accordingly no admission is made at this time. Sorry, as to the time, Johnny texted Whitney Heard on 21 May 2016 at 7.30pm in response to a text he received to her suggesting his arrival may have been later than 7.15. The building has multiple penthouses, some of which are adjoining. Penthouse 3 is the location that Miss Heard alleged the abuse occurred. Penthouse 5 is the penthouse across the hallway, in which Miss Heard and Miss Pennington claimed Mr. Depp destroyed items in the evening. Penthouse 4 adjoins Penthouse 3. I probably didn't need to go through all that. The third sentence of the paragraph is denied. Johnny was not drunk or high when he arrived. He just came to the he, he came to the South Broadway apartment with two of his security team, Mr. Bett and Jerry Judge, to collect some of his belongings from Penthouse 3. Uh, he brought his security guards with him precisely because he was concerned about what Miss Heard might do. The security guards waited immediately outside the door of Penthouse 3. The fourth, sen fourth sentence of paragraph 8D is denied. To the best of Johnny's knowledge at the time, Amber was alone in Penthouse 3 when he arrived, although Johnny now believes Miss Pennington might have been hiding in the penthouse. The, uh, Johnny does not know who Elizabeth Mars is, but observed a woman in Penthouse 5 with Mr. Drew. Um, 
Where are we? Just go back, make sure I haven't missed too many super ch uh, missed too many chats. Both sides. That time someone did this. There's your great. Did a timeline on YouTube. Explains the calls. Yep. Thank you, Law Patrol, for doing this. You're the only person disclosing the crooked shit that went on in this trial. Yeah, no, look, honestly, more than happy to. It's um, after I got done reading this, I mean, I, I was honestly, I was going to go to bed, but I was too agitated. And frankly, this has been very cathartic for me as well. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. I'm um, not sure about anyone else, but here they, anywhere else, here, but they need a person in court to testify because defendants have the right to face their accusers. So why couldn't they appear via live link like the others? Um, I think the right to face your accuser is slightly different to um, provision of third party evidence and testimony, but I, I take your point. Um, and yeah, I, I also agree that if there was an instance where they could be, where it could have been done by um, video link, that it probably should have. I mean, if Kate Moss could show up, I don't see why she, I don't see why no one else could. Uh, legal Bites had the Black Belt Barrister on stream last week, and he went through some of the legal differences and showed some parts of the case. It may be worth taking a look for crossovers. Yeah, fair enough. Um, we don't publish photos without a parent or, um, you yeah. um, you can check out ECB tour by AMI, a resident who lives there on popcorn planet. <laughs> uh, where are we? well, Susie, wouldn't that depend on the age of consent in whatever state you're in at the time? 16 is still a child. I'm inclined to agree. Uh, where are we? All right. Um, yeah, give me a second and I'll send it to you. Uh, I'm only going to go for another, what, f uh, 40 minutes tops, though. Um, Oh, yeah. I th think both legal teams agreed to the ones that could uh, give de depositions only. Uh, yeah, look, that's quite possible. US trial was delayed for a year. Okay. Delayed for a year, maybe unable to be in person. H team had to agree to depo testimony. Or judge had to rule at least. Yep. Io sounds like a total dick. It's such a dick move to out someone as LGBT when the person in question is not ready or didn't want, let alone take pictures of a 16-year-old without their consent. Yep. The FOIP keeps kids' photos private. I'm going to assume FOIP is a piece of legislation. Uh, I think that's right but I still think they should have been subpoenaed to testify live. All right. That should have gone through. I think. Um... Uh, Adam Wildman posted a pic of the UK courts of high justice. Possible that JD will try to appeal the UK verdict. That'd be interesting, and it'd be quite nice to see. Uh, I'm confused. Is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Mars, who allegedly lived... Yes, so that's the, that, that's the random person that Johnny had no idea was even there. So... Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen... Welcome, my. What am I going to call you? Like producer or? 
Uh, underling works. Underling? Yeah, I suppose that works. <laughs> All right. um, underling works just fine. When it is not a criminal case, they cannot be forced to come in. So that was why no Elon. Um, no, look, that's not the case. It was purely just that Elon spent a buttload of money avoiding being subpoenaed. <laughs> Did he what? I'm surprised he didn't actually spend time um, on, on a um, SpaceX flight or something. Did, did you hear he right? flew out of the country at one point just to avoid a subpoena? I did hear that, yeah. Um, Johnny already tried to appeal in the UK. Seems like it's more about perjury charges, similar to what he did. Yeah, look, uh, it, there has been some extra things that have come out that may give him better grounds to deal with the... Um, uh, to deal with an appeal, but we'll certainly just have to sort of wait and see, I suppose. Can I throw something in? Yeah, yeah. The problem with the UK too is that it was judge alone and he only has to base his decision on a preponderance of evidence. Oh, that's right. I forgot you were asleep. You didn't hear the start of this stream, did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's four in the morning, man. <laughs> Yes, I, I absolutely tore a new one about that, about how this is, um, how it was judge alone, how it's incredibly biased and that there's less room for appeal because he is both finder of law and finder of fact. Yes. Um, and, and the English yeah. law is notoriously conservative on appeals. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah, More subscribers have joined, hasn't lying it? on the couch and um, my phone just starts going bling and sometimes it glitches out and if I don't open it, it'll message me constantly uh, well in that case i'm sorry to have woken you up i'm not i'm not <laughs> where are we so oh sorry. what i was going to say too by the way just one thing the the pictures it's not just that he outed someone is it she um has claimed neither to be trans pro trans or anything she's tried to stay politically neutral in the situation and then he threw her photos and attributed statements to her into a pro trans movement oh seriously yeah so he threw her in the deep end of a really touchy political topic yeah so that's just not on um, where are we? Well, I can't even remember where I got to with the chats here. Uh, oh, Freedom you were just after, just after the, the link comment. Okay. Uh, yep, seen that. Oh, that's right. Yep, Elon avoided them so they couldn't serve him. Yep, play hide and seek. Yes, that was an epic game of hide and seek. I've, I've never never before played a game where I've had to, had to catch an international flight to try and catch someone. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was trying to be quiet. But... <laughs> Does UK, Australia, and or have double jeopardy laws? Yes, we do. So double jeopardy or res judicata is basically um, where any sort of legal matter has already been tried by a court. Unless there's a reason to appeal it, you can't bring it back before another uh, before the court to have it reheard, provided that there's no new circumstances on your cause of action or anything like that you get one bite at the apple um and if you if you lose you're done basically or if it's released with uh, is it dismissed with prejudice it doesn't even have to be that you lost it can be dismissed prematurely with prejudice is that right um dismissed with prejudice uh y you can still have that redone but you have to show a damn good reason Show to J Jody Gottlieb too. Yeah, well, bloody well. Please activate your closed captioning for future. I, I don't even know how I do that. I don't even know how you do that. Hang on, what's it saying with hotkeys? With a Kiwi and an Aussie in the channel, I'm not even entirely sure that's wise. <laughs> <laughs> News layout, picture in picture layout, group layout. Sorry, I'm just looking through this settings to see if I can actually work that out. Mic, camera, share, screen, video. Oh, actually, I'll tell you what, that won't, it won't be a StreamYard setting. It'll be a YouTube setting. YouTube. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that for future reference. Uh, it uh, might be because they had really bad captions, granted, but they did have captions on the courthouse live stream. 
Yes, that is true. Jane Brown. Oh my, I just Googled hot down like a hot dog down a hallway. Ruffle. Oh no. <laughs> Don't do that. Delete. Yeah. That just clear your history. And I hope that was in a. Ooh. We were talking about Amber Heard and. Don't um, stop. Yeah, all right. And there's a comma in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, this judgment enraged me so much. I read through this not long ago. I, when you said you were reading this, I was like, I have to fucking hear what he thinks because seriously, this is like Fifty Shades of Grey, the dark fucking side edition. Oh, yeah. Um, all right. Since I H recorded so many conversations with JD, I worried. Yep, we're actually going to come to that as well. Some of that pops up in this one. Yes, in fact, not far from here. Yep. Um, all right. So where was I reading from? Um, to the best of Johnny's knowledge, at the time, Miss Heard was alone. Although he now believes that Rocky was hiding. Yep. Okay. Submitted that she kept the key to the Broadway and that a number of her friends, including Miss Pennington and Mr. Drew, lived in and worked out of the claimants of Johnny's penthouse apartments, rent-free for approximately four years. Fuck. What what have I got to do to get a penthouse free for four years? Um, Save that no admissions are made as to whether Miss Heard sent a text to Rocky or as to whether or not Io Tillett White said as to what Io said to uh, Amber on the phone. As this is outside... Johnny's knowledge. Paragraphs eight E to eight L are denied. When Johnny arrived at Penthouse Three, security guards waited just outside the door while he went in for approximately ten minutes in total. Miss Herb was in the penthouse when he arrived. Johnny and Amber called Kevin Murphy from downstairs. He, yeah, Johnny asked Mr. Murphy to repeat to Miss Herb what he had. Earlier told him about her admission that the defecation on the bed was just a harmless prank. Mr. Murphy repeated that Miss Heard had admitted that to him that she was responsible. Amber yelled and swore at Mr. Murphy, reportedly calling him repeatedly calling him a fucking liar. Wish I could say I'm surprised. <laughs> well, I mean, no. seriously, how, how many how many people got on that stand and she called them a liar? All of them, just literally yeah. all of them. I don't think there's a single person that had any sort of. Although um, one thing I noticed, because um, I did um, sociology and whatnot shit a long time ago, hmm. a person who is actively lying will avoid in their usage of words anything that could be self-incriminatory. Mm-hmm. So you'll notice she never said they're lying. She always said, I don't know, or they weren't there, or she twisted mm-hmm. it because she didn't want the word liar to come out of her mouth, which yep. would make connect her to the word lying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, where are we? As Amber would not stop screaming, he hung up the phone. Johnny went upstairs to collect his belongings. Downstairs, Amber telephoned Io and began talking loudly on the phone in a mocking and goading t- in mocking and goading terms about Johnny and the defecation incident. Henceforth called Grumpy Storm. Uh, Johnny then went back downstairs and took the phone in order to speak to Io. He said to Io, you got what you want, you can have her. I don't care, it's over. Or words to that effect. He then tossed the phone onto the sofa and crossed the room away from Amber towards the kitchen, which is some 20 feet away from where she was sitting on the sofa. He did not scream any profanities or insults, and he did not storm upstairs or come back down and grab the phone for a second time. The phone did not hit Amber in the face or elsewhere, nor did he pull her hair or strike her or grab her face or touch her, slap, shake or yank Amber around the room or say the words alleged in paragraph 8H. Can I just Two- step in for a sec? Yeah. 293. 293 is clearly evidence from a different person, isn't it? Like, this judge is literally taking... Because this statement, the phone did not have Miss Heard, isn't direct. Oh, no, no. The, we're still going through the... Um, we're still going through the pleadings. This is what... Um, this is what uh, Johnny's team put into their reply to the defence. Okay. Yeah, so this I, is... I, when I was reading through it, I kept getting 
a bit puzzled because I was like, wait a minute, he's just said two statements, one after another, that contradict each other. Like, where's yep. the reference need to tell which is which? No, no, fair enough. Like, as a lawyer, uh, you probably follow this. As a layman, I did struggle a wee bit with this. Okay, well, fair enough. Well, I mean, look, if, there, if there's any points where um, uh, anything needs to be pointed out, let me know because I presume that it'll assist everyone in the that's watching as well. Um, where are we? Um, where did I get to? Two police officers who attended the apartment directly after the alleged incident and interviewed Amber twice in good light saw no injuries or bruising or swelling on his face or elsewhere. When one of the officers asked her what had happened, she responded, nothing. Uh, when, she, when Amber was asked if she was hurt, she shook her head. She did not say anything to the officers that she had been assaulted. And when asked if she had been injured in any way, she said she wasn't injured and refused medical treatment. She said she did not want to make a police report and that there was nothing wrong. Uh, she had no visible injuries the following day. Both of the officers subsequently confirmed their evidence to this effect in separate de depositions. Um, in the premises, if and to the extent that Rocky subsequently took a photo of Miss Heard's face, it was not a photo of any injury caused by Johnny. Basically, a nice little dig there saying that... an injury caused by anything. No, well, what, what they're really saying there is a nice little dig saying that if there's a photo and there's an injury to Amber's face, it wasn't Johnny that did it. So they're basically <laughs> implicating that if there's an injury in that photo... Either Rocky's done it or Amber did it to herself to try and um, bolster Actually, herself. I was, was going to ask you about this, like the whole conspiracy theory thing that's floating around at the moment. I think mm. Amber, I think Amber did actually have a lot of this to herself because seriously, if I was in Amber's shoes and I really wanted to nail it to Johnny, I'd get my friend to like punch me in the nose or the lip or the teeth or whatever, which makes me think she didn't have someone she could go to and say, "Hey, you need to give me a bruise or something." Yeah. Um, well, you know, for lack of a better term, so sociopaths will do whatever they need to to get their mm. um, to I, meet I their ends. I honestly think she duped everybody, like even her friends. But I just think her friends are assholes. Because mm. they must have seen stuff. They must have seen stuff. You would think so. Carry um, on. Sorry. Right. No, no, no. All good. I was also just um, checking the chat, which I'll get back to in a minute as well. Um, as Joan was crossing the room away from her towards the kitchen, she began shouting. Upon hearing her shouting, the security guards immediately, within one or two seconds, opened the door and rushed into the kitchen, rushed into Penthouse 3 via the kitchen, where he was standing. Immediately upon opening the door, they observed that he was standing in the kitchen area far away from Amber. She was repeatedly screaming, stop hitting me, Johnny, or words to that effect, into the phone before and at the moment the guards entered. So she's screaming that basically to the phone that Io is still on while he's 20 feet away. Um, Johnny was not hitting Miss Heard. He was standing in the kitchen approximately 20 feet away just before the security guards entered. Uh, Rocky suddenly appeared from behind Amber, running past to his right side sh towards Miss Heard, shouting, don't do it, stop it, leave her alone. I can see why now Johnny's starting to think that Rocky was hiding in the apartment. Um, Amber was visibly sh visibly shocked to see the security guards enter and attempted to feign crying, as did Rocky. Amber changed from the present tense to past tense and said, he hit me with a phone and it's the last time you hit me, Johnny. You better not hit me again. Or words to that effect. He did not move, but said, what are you talking about? You're crazy. I didn't hit you. Uh, Miss Heard screamed, call 911, presumably because Io Tillett Wright was still waiting on the line. One of the security guards, Mr. Judge, said to Johnny, let's get out of here, boss, and took Johnny immediately out the door. There was no interaction between the security guards and Amber. The time between the security guards entering the apartment and leaving with the claimant was less than a minute. Johnny did not move from the kitchen from the time the security guards entered to the point where he left the penthouse with them. Johnny did not touch or approach Rocky during the time she was there. Johnny did not smash any items in penthouse 3, penthouse 5 or elsewhere, nor did he kick a hole in a door. For the avoidance of doubt, he did not brandish a magnum sized or any other sized bottle of wine or any object at all. He did not use a bottle to or otherwise strike 
glass, fruit, cutlery, flowers, candles, or any other object. The police officers who attended shortly after the alleged innocent incident inspected the property, saw no smashed items, broken bottles, broken glass, destroyed cutlery, destroyed flowers, or spilled wine in either Penthouse 3 or Penthouse 5. Uh, in the premises, if and to the extent that she subsequently took photos of smashed items, these items were not smashed by the claimant. Yeah. So again, they're basically they're taking a dig saying if there was anything there, it's been staged. After leaving Penthouse 3, Johnny went to his security guards to went with his security guards to check Penthouse 5, where he discovered Mr. Drew, a woman whom he now presumes was Elizabeth Mars, and a dog. Also, it wasn't just that they had some random person in there. There was another animal living in his penthouse without his knowledge. Yeah, she had her pet with her. <laughs> how did I skip? How did I miss that? I must have overlooked that in the first round. First There's round even throw. photos online of um, of her, Elizabeth, walking a dog. Bloody hell. Okay, anyway. Um, well, thankfully, that's that comes to the end of all that, so I don't really... really things should move a little bit quicker now, thankfully. Um, I can briefly... Uh, what the claimant must prove in order to make out a claim of libel. A libel claimant must, in brief, prove that the defamatory material was published by the defendant of and concerning him and in the form... and in a form that has a degree of permanence. Um for the individual such as Mr. Depp, it must provide that a statement is not defamatory unless its publication has caused or is likely to cause serious harm to the reputation of the claimant. Um, as a defendant submitted in a skeleton argument, it was therefore common ground that the words meant that Johnny had committed physical violence against Amber, that this caused her significant injury and on occasion it caused her to fear for her life. It is worth emphasising that defendants therefore accepted that the words meant that Mr. Depp had done these things. Uh, the defendants analysed the remaining differences between the parties as follows. Uh, one, whether the words imputed by Johnny was guilty of domestic abuse against Miss Heard on overwhelming evidence. Whether the words imputed that the claimant was constrained to pay no less than £5 million to compensate Miss Heard for physical, physical violence he'd inflicted on her which is just blatantly wrong anyway. Whether the words imputed that Johnny had resulted in him being subjected to a continuing restraining order or whether the words imputed that due to his physical violence against Miss Heard, he was not fit, fit to work in the film industry anymore. Um, that's all BS. That's all BS. Um, just for the record, I'm skipping over information that has uh, already been covered basically so the background the information that's already been covered in particular in the current trial um because it's basically just rehashing stuff that we've all already heard um in terms of the uk case the follow um so depp gave uh johnny gave testimony as did the female police officer um, Stephen Judas actually got in and gave proper testimony in this one as well. Edward White, who is Johnny's new accountant. Uh, Trinity Esparza, the owner of the company which did the concierge services for Eastern Columbia Building. Uh, Malcolm Connolly, uh, Tara Roberts, Samantha McMillan. She's the, she's one of the big ones because she was the one one of the ones that was disputing the uh, use of makeup to cover Amber's bruises and that sort of thing. And Hilda Vargas, she's the poor lady that found the turd. Um, ben King, Kevin Murphy, who's the other big one. He's the one that sort of triggered off the perjury um, charges here in Australia. Uh, Kate James, who was uh, Amber's assistant with the axe to grind. Uh, Sean Bett, Sterling Jenkins, the driver. Isaac gave, gave his own um, testimony in the UK as well. Uh, Alejandro, although I don't think he drove off during his de his deposition this time. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> he was, hey, he was driving home the point. <laughs> um, and Catherine Kendall. So she was one of the ones that was actually mentioned in the article as being a, um, a Me Too and Time's Up activist. Um, so they actually quoted her in that article without her permission, and even when she contacted them, they refused to, to remove any of her quotes or anything like that. So they were 
were well and truly um, stepping out of line with that. Um, uh, and Johnny, so in the UK, they have something called a hearsay notice as well, so that they can actually rely on certain hearsay, well, we'll use Johnny's terms, hearsay papers. Um, so they use the actual depositions from the two original police officers, um, which had been given in the course of divorce proceedings. So they're able to bring in extraneous documents from other court proceedings. Um, the draft declaration, which had been prepared by Jerry Dr Judge in the divorce proceedings, um, as well as the declaration for Miss Divinary, uh, I can never pronounce that, Divinary, Miss D. I'm just going to call her Miss D. Um, where are we? Uh, he also s served witness statements from various people, but they did not be, they were not required to give evidence, including his former partner and Winona Ryder. Um, I did think it was interesting though, because these, these um, witness statements and things that weren't uh, used, PA Media, formerly the Press Association, applied for copies of the witness statements. So despite the fact that they weren't used, um, they tried to basically use freedom of information to get copies of the witness statements that were not actually used in the trial, which is just rude because it's only for public. Um, the only reason you do that is for, um, oh, I don't want to say, it. what's the opposite of journalism? <laughs> um, um, Australian reporting. Oh, very funny. <laughs> um, no, tabloid, tabloidism. Tabloidism. Thank you. That's what I was going for. That's what I was after. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, just things like tabloidism, sensationalism, you know, the, the uh, uh, filth. Yeah. Now, see, here's, here's the interesting thing, because what what um, what Wendy was talking about before with who, who was appearing via um, deposition and via um, whether or not they could appear via video link. I mean, look, Amber gave testimony in person. Josh Drew... Was via video link, so he he was live, but he was via video link. Everyone, well, true. No, he was yeah, deposition. No, no, no. He 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 appeared via video link from Los Angeles. Uh, are you sure? Mm. I thought it was yeah. depot because they cut out the bits um, pertaining to um, Elon Musk. Are you, are you... No, no, no. Josh are you, are you... Is, is Raquel Pennington's partner? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Are you talking about the Virginia case or the UK case? Virginia. Yeah. Sorry. So, so in the UK case, they all appeared in by, via video link live. Ah. Uh, which, okay. Which I think is really interesting because I mean, it, it basically just shows that in the space of what three years, mm. none of them were willing to um, back her up in person again. Yeah, that was odd. So. Yeah, that, um, that that really did. Yeah, that really did sort of strike me as that she fell out with all these people so quickly. I mean, when was the last time you did something that made a friend just walk away forever? No, exactly. Um, so yeah, yes, it'll definitely go up. But um, yeah, uh, I've probably only got another sixteen minutes anyway. So um, hopefully, we'll be able to finish it up on the next one. Part two tonight. <laughs> we'll see what happens. It's, it, hey, it'll be Sunday night. You owe, so. you owe me two hours of AM time. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, where are we? So, yeah, and, the, and then the judge went on about how he had 13 Lever Arch files of documents. And anyway, um, so, yeah. So he, he, And then he gives a history of the relationship between Johnny and Amber. Um, I did think it was interesting that in Dr. Kipper's notes he mentioned in an email to christy that um johnny seems to actually romanticize the entire drug culture and has no accountability for his behaviors not something you really want your um doctor to be putting in their notes but um i also found it interesting that um johnny and uh whitney were still on good terms at that time as well excuse me um uh, so on the 27th of may 2016 she obtained a tro he was not present or represented at the hearing 
It was what in England would be referred to as an order obtained after hearing only from Miss Hurd's lawyer, although on notice to Mr. Depp's lawyer who filed a response on the 26th of May. One of the terms of the settlement... Uh, where are we? So it, it didn't proceed to a full restraining order because it was one of the terms of the settlements between them for their divorce proceedings that the uh, restraining order proceedings be dismissed with prejudice. Uh, so by this stage, they were divorced. Okay. Ch uh, challenge the credibility and independent of particular allegations. Alleged lie to the Department of Homeland Security regarding the status of Savannah McMillan. Now, this, this is interesting because they basically, he went through and was provided various instances of things that would impugn Amber's credibility. So where she lied to government officials, where she um, basically did other things that weren't necessarily above board. And he more or less yes, decided to... Perhaps have committed perjury. <laughs> um, and he basically just dismisses them as if they're of, of no relevance to her character. Um, so in terms of this alleged lie to Department of Homeland Security, she supposedly had a um, individual named, uh, what's her name, Savannah McMillan, um, who was supposed to, supposedly a friend who was assisting her with some work or whatnot, but she apparently was also actually working for her. Um Savannah was supposed to be, was apparently working in the United States as her, as Amber's assistant. Um, Ms. Hurd's response was that Savannah had worked for her as an assistant during filming in the UK, although she had been hired by the production company for the film. She'd been making London Fields, not by Amber herself. Uh, Kate James had been her assistant in the USA, and Miss James' witness statement said that the letter from Miss Heard falsely claimed that Savannah was just a friend and not an employee. I'm a and, and he he goes, I'm afraid that I do not find Miss James a satisfactory witness. She had been dismissed by Miss Heard in February of 2015, and the circumstances of her termination still appear to be a cause of rancor with Miss James. So this is what happens, people. Even if you do have an extra grind, don't make it so bloody obvious that someone dismisses your opinion. Um, but basically, Amber supplied a letter to the Department of Homeland Security to try and um, smooth over whether or not her friend slash assistant was actually working in the US when she wasn't supposed to. This is despite the fact that she was actually pay paying her roughly $1,625, what looks like fairly regularly. Um, on the 21st of April, 2016, Miss Heard had a dinner to celebrate her 30th birthday. Uh, the nurse, Miss Borum, was one of the guests. In a note which she wrote for the occasion, because apparently private nurses still take notes even when they're just at a party, she referred to arriving with the client's UK assistant, Savannah. However, she did not give evidence before me, and there is nothing in the documentation to explain the source of her information that Savannah was acting as her assistant, if indeed she intended to convey that by her note. Like, seriously. It, it, it's still a open possibility, and he's just completely disregarded it because, oh, you know, no, no one's... Yeah, distracted by the chat again. Um, oh, yeah, we're just discussing how um, language has evolved from pictographic hieroglyphs into words, and now the millennials are taking it back to pictographic emojis. So I'm doing in-depth legal analysis, and you guys are doing philosophical conversation in the chat. How the hell is my so brain not exploded? <laughs> we're, just, we're just talking about emojis <laughs> and poops, poopy, shitty poems, and... Bad, bad language. Fair enough. <laughs> um, we love you, we're listening. No, no, all good. Um, under cross-examination, Amber said that Savannah was on and off her assistant, but not in the USA. Um, the note does not alter my conclusion that Ms. Heard did not lie to the Department of Homeland Security. Bullshit. Anyway. Um... Oh, here we go. Conviction in Australia for knowingly making a false declaration. My wheelhouse. 
Um, so yeah, in March 2015, he was here filming Pirates of the Caribbean 5. Um, at that stage, she was still fi- filming in the UK. She had flown to from New York to Los Angeles, where she met Johnny. The two of them then flew by private charter pr- plane to Brisbane on the 21st of April. They were accompanied by two dogs, Pistol and Boo. Pistol having belonged to Miss Heard, and Boo originally belonging to Mr. Depp's mother, who was then owned by him. The plane was met at Brisbane Airport by quarantine and customs officials. Amber completed an incoming passenger card that was that included the question, are you bringing into Australia animals, parts of animals, etc.? She answered no. The answer was false, since Miss Heard was accompanied by Pistol and Boo. She knew that it was false, since she knew that she'd been accompanied by the dogs. Jesus, this guy likes the sound of his own voice. <clears throat> she was accompanied by Pistol and Boo, but we do not know whether it was Pistol or Boo that did the poo. Uh... <sighs> Sorry. No, you're not. On the 13th, oh, excuse me. On the 13th of May 2015, the dogs were ordered into quarantine and an order was made that they be re exported within 72 hours. On the 15th of May, they were taken out of Australia. All right, how do I move this around? Um, on or about the 8th of July, she was charged with three offences. Listen to this. I do not have details of two of them, but the third was under 100, section 137.2 of the Commonwealth Criminal Code because she had produced a document, namely the incoming passenger card to Cara Burgess, an, Australian's customer, an Australian Customs and Border Protection official, knowing that said document was false. He didn't have details of the two most serious charges and how that would otherwise... Just just to highlight, throw in the ones that are missing for the audience. Okay, so just just to throw in for the audience, the other two charges were the illegal importation of two animals into... Sorry, I should say two animals or animal carcasses into Australia. To clarify, each one of those charges, $100,000 Australian fine, up to 10 years in prison. So she could have been facing 20 years plus $200,000 worth of fines, or call it 140000 American. And he's just gone, oh, yeah, I don't have details of those, as if there's no way in hell that information wasn't going to be available to him. Anyway, before I get more rolled up, because it's not like that calls her integrity into question or anything. Um I don't know if that I don't let's put, I don't know if Amber Heard's credibility is can be said to be in question or to be a thesaurus of the truth. That's one way of putting it. Um, she prov- uh, yeah she provided the unsworn or sw- unsworn statement and then on third of November there was an indication she would plead guilty to knowingly making a false statement on the basis that the other two charges were discontinued. This was acceptable to the prosecution, and the court therefore treated the guilty plea as timely. So I just have a button here. I have no idea what Tweety US News is asking asking me with those emojis. Am I frowny face? Are you grumpy or just face? old? Uh, oh, that's quite a bit different than what I was thinking. See, this is where I'm I'm not a boomer, but I saw that as frowny face or brownie face. I'm sorry. The answer uh, to which is I'm both, because I'm not <laughs> Mary. Um, right, then she swore the affidavit, which amongst other things set out her belief that it was ne- that the necessary documentation for the dogs to gain into entry into Australia had been provided separately, and accordingly it was not necessary for her to declare their presence at the customs entry. Bullshit. Irrespective of whether or not you think you've got a permit, if you if a form is sat in front of you that specifically says, do you have any animals with you? Nah, she can't claim that. That's no. no, because she would have no 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 because she would have had to declare the animals leaving America. Exactly. Yeah, no, nah, that doesn't that that doesn't no, nah, that's bullshit. Yeah. Um not quite sure why it rankled up my heels as well about this, but he he, he referred to Magistrate Callahan as just B Callahan as well. I, well, I he, know he it's dropped the honorative. Yeah. Um. So I if mean, you that, that, that you get in massive trouble in court. Yeah, exactly. So, um, 
yeah, and, and then he mentions that it's reported in the Guardian and that it was uh, magistrate that the magistrate was Bernadette Callahan. Yeah, that's fine. And then he still refers to it as Ms. Callahan. Mm, not her honor or my learned colleague or any of the pejoratives. Uh, well, I, I kind of feel like it would be appropriate in this instance to at least refer to her, her as Magistrate Callahan. I mean, that's mm. he, he had, as far as I'm aware, he had copies of the. Um, the details of the case. So, yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, that's the details of what Callahan said during hers. The offense which she pled guilty to involved knowingly making a false statement. As Miss Callahan said, it was not a trivial offense, but its nature is so far removed from the evidence which Miss Hurd gave in this trial that its relevance for her credibility is marginal, marginal at no. best. No, it's not because no. prior prior bad conduct can be used as a aggravating factor in sentence. So prior, no, mm -hmm. that doesn't make any legal sense at all. Mm -hmm. Now you can understand why I was getting so frustrated. Um, where are we? On October two, nine October two thousand fifteen, she wrote to Carl Martin and Marty Singer on the. Oh yeah, so this is basically. Her so allegation that she sought to procure false evidence from Kevin Murphy and Kate James for the purpose of the criminal proceedings in Australia. So she actually wrote to Carl Martin and Marty Singer, who are where are we? Carl, it was there somewhere. Marty Singer is one of Johnny's lawyers, and well, Carl Austin is someone else. But anyway, I'm not sure if that's a typo or not. Anyway, point is, she, she contacted lawyers and basically said, the only thing we're missing is evidence of the process being initiated, however not completed. <laughs> and therefore, the, do the dogs weren't, take weren't being taken on the trip. That is obviously harder to prove since it involves documenting something that didn't happen. However, since I know we attempted to bring them at least once before, into a, in, before the Australia trip, I can ask Kate to include that in her statement if that would be helpful. And then the, one of the lawyers wrote back, that would be great. Fuck me, so Excuse I had me. To mute. I had to mute because, <laughs> because one of the chatters did said, did she offer the judge a pole dance? And the first thing that came into my mind was a seafood kebab. <laughs> Stop looking don't, at me like I, that. You know, no, flapping your face. Oh, for God's sake. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm going to mute. Sorry. Fuck now. Excuse the language, people, but you can see what I'm dealing with. Oh, uh, I love anyway. <laughs> On 11th of October 2015, she wrote to um, Ken Murphy. It is Ken. Kevin, sorry. It wrote to Kevin Murphy, and she forwarded the email chain above saying, Kevin, what do you think? Could you possibly reach out for us? Do you think you could get her to do it? On the same day, Mr. Singer wrote an email to her with, back to Amber, which included the following. I don't know what your relationship with Kate James is at the time since you fired her. You have to be careful that she will cooperate and will not go public if you ask her not to be truthful. Um, Spit it out. I know you want to say something about that. Oh, well, it's, it's pretty freaking obvious that like, you, you, with this documentation alone, you can understand why they've opened up the perjury charges here in Australia. Oh, yes. <sighs> and I mean, here's the question. If she gets charged, so I was going to ask you about this. Mm -hmm. If she gets found guilty, in absentia, mm -hmm. obviously, of perjury mm -hmm. to do with the Australia shit, can that then be used as grounds to impugn character since she was the primary witness lending credibility to the UK decision? <sighs> Possibly, I look. I, I I'm not a I'm not a an absolute gun on UK law. It's something that I'd need to look into. I would think that, given that it is her whole, given that he basically relied on her word. I mean, you can see it going through this case that it's literally, you know, Amber told me this, and the judge believes believe that. Um, oh, hang on. 
What the fuck is happening? Asking someone to commit perjury. Exactly. This is where I'm coming from. And yet, for some reason, this this particular judge decided that Amber and her people were the more credible witnesses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. Mm. Like, you know that the judge's wife had lunch with Amber Heard the day before the decision or some shit, eh? Yes, someone did mention that. Um, and apparently the judge's wife was friends with Elaine and all sorts of shit. Yes. Um, where are we? Uh... Well, I, Marty, have admit, yeah. I have to admit, I actually don't disagree with. I don't disagree with the UK decision. I disagree with how it was reached. Um, I think the UK case would have been very different if the extraneous material and the forced disclosure by Amber had come through. Yes. Because that, that's the thing that really gave me the shits is that this ju- that they put an application to force her to disclose things from the Virginia trial, and the judge just squashed it. I mean, if she's if she's going to be providing so much evidence in this case, there is absolutely no reason why Johnny shouldn't be able to impugn her and have all that information come back, particularly when they're asking for him to provide everything as well. Yeah, because don't forget the essence of the UK case was not, is Amber telling the truth? The essence of the question being asked by the UK um, trial was, could the son have reasonably believed Amber Heard? Well, no, that that wasn't the case of it because they were relying on the truth on the truth defense. So they have they had to be able to say that it, whether or not the um, the statements that were made were substantially true on the balance of probabilities. So they still had Actually, to go the balance through. Of probabilities meant that because Heard was the supplier of the evidence, that they had to consider her truthfully credible. No, balance ah. of probabilities is your is your fifty point one zero percent. So it's they still. By making those statements in order to rely on the defense, they still had to prove on at least 50, 50.1% that there was sufficient evidence to believe that the um, the statements that they made about Johnny were substantially true. So they still had, so basically, in order to rely on the defense, they still had to pull in all of the stuff about the, about what. Oh. Um, okay, well, then I don't agree with the UK decision. I thought right. it was a much simpler matter. I thought the def- I thought that it was a real uphill battle to disprove. Like I, it was like, okay, how long is a piece of string? I believe it's this long, Your Honor. Uh, okay, well, yeah. I can't argue with that. I um, have um, to reread that. Thank you. No, worries. Elaine is trying to say it is double jeopardy, even though he sued the son, not heard. Yeah, and look, and the the other thing as well, something that Elaine doesn't seem to understand. UK, US, two different jurisdictions. Yep. Double jeopardy does not apply across sovereign borders. Nope. Basically, did it establish that our old attorneys knew that Miss Heard may have a perchance, perchance for lying, creating more out of a pile of BS? That's why drug smugglers can be prosecuted in multiple countries if they cross international or state borders. Yes, exactly. Uh... Uh, yeah, some of that, and it, it that does come in later as well. What's that? Uh, oh, sorry, I was just re- referring to Susie. Um, I thought they relied on Amber's notes from her journal and her psychologist notes, and yeah, and, and some of that. that eh? I want to, I want to write an analysis on, or paper analysis on that journal that ages the ink on the paper to know whether that journal was actually filled out, Gone Girl styles, at one time. Surely they can test that shit. Oh, there's no way she would have filled it out all in one go. Surely she wouldn't be that stupid. Um, I don't know. We are talking about a woman who literally shit in the bed. We don't know if it was her. My money's still on Io. You really? That's just my... Wasn't that's my. That um, no, I don't think so. I mean, we'll, we'll come to it, but I'm pretty sure he was still there. But, okay. um, look, that, that's just my opinion. I mean, I... I Anyway. Oh, just, just a quick me. counterclaim to something in the comments. Yep. To give Elaine a bit of credit, like I don't want to, but to give Elaine a little bit of fucking credit here, if she was to come out at this point and say anything other than what she said, her career would be over. If she comes out and says, I honestly believed my client, then it's like she's trying to rehabilitate herself and her own career, not Amber Heard. <sighs> I'm inclined to agree, 
to a certain extent. I think that, I think you're right. I think if she came out now and said, um, well, I mean, obviously she can't at the moment because she's still technically representing the client, so she can't exactly. without breaking privilege or anything like that. Um, but if she if she wasn't doing the press tours, if she wasn't fighting vociferously for um, for Amber in that regard, then I think it's a case of I think a career would already be over. So I think it's more she's flogging a dead horse, but at the same time, I think that's her only option. Yeah, she's got she's got no recourse here. Um, like Rottenborn has he he didn't humiliate himself in court. He was everyone sort of said, "Oh, you're a good lawyer, bad client." Whereas yep. Elaine, she was like bad lawyer, bad client. If she, yeah, if she, yeah, like I, I don't like her as a person, and I think she really messed up as a lawyer, and I think she's going to struggle to settle anything out of court moving forward. But I can see yep. why, for her own self protection, she might hold to I believed my client. Yeah, um, I just want to address this, Susie. I'm pretty sure a doctor of psychology isn't a medical doctor. I think they're a PhD. So they've got to actually go and do the extra training to be able to prescribe um, medicines. Actually, don't quote me on that. Just... diagnoses, psychiatrist treats. Yes, that's my understanding. So I saw a child psychologist for years as a uh, ADD. You know what ADD is? Yep. I was in the first 12 test batches of ADD diagnosis in New Zealand. And um, mine was deemed to be severe enough to require one-on-one -on -one treating with a child psychologist for five years. Okay. And he, he never, ever, ever offered any sort of therapy or treatment. It was literally, he would sit there and he would listen and he would write everything mm -hmm. down. And all my notes were then sent to a psychiatrist for therapeutic rehabilitation. Yeah. So, yeah. So a, 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 a psychologist that is a doctor will have a doctor of psychology, which is usually in clinical psychology. So yeah, they're, they're not, they're not medical doctors in the same way that a psychiatrist is. No. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the same reason for board certification versus no board certification. Yes. I think the greatest liar to Amber is Amber. She lies to herself enough that she believes it is true. Works with a habitual. Yeah, eventually they just start believing their own lies. Yeah, but how far uh, can you take that? Honestly, I don't want to give her that much credibility. I believe she genuinely believes she's the victim, but she has to have to be aware of the physical acts that she's carried out. I'm wondering her backing her court TV interview with the emergency court was Judge A blasting her to shut up and after disrespect to the court. Look, at, at this point, we're not going to know until, until we actually hear what um, what came out of that, which we may never do. If it was a, if Wait, it was closed what? chambers, I oh, didn't you hear Elaine got called in by the court. She after she the no 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 the the interview got cancelled. She she backed no, out at the last the minute. Interviews. Oh yeah yeah. So she did that. She did CBS. She did CNN. Um, she did the Today Show, and well, um, yeah, she she was due to go on court TV at two o'clock yesterday or two o'clock um, US time, and um, they pulled out at the last minute. Um, Farron was spitting chips because court TV didn't actually say anything for about 10, 15 minutes that she wasn't going to actually be there. Um, oh, I wonder if that had to do with the fact that Elaine was doing the same thing as she was doing in her closing. She was testifying to facts, not in evidence. Quite possibly, but I mean, look—if if it was—if it's a closed chamber rake over the knuckles, we're not going to know. No, but, Google um, time though. True. Mm. I didn't hear that. No, I didn't hear that at all. Oh, well, there you go. Honestly, I've not watched more than two minutes of her interview. I couldn't stand it. I I thought, no, this is propaganda, and then I came to the conclusion I voiced. But I I couldn't like I I've watched very little of the Amber Heard testimony beyond the memes. I yep. cannot watch it without becoming physically angry because of my own personal experiences. I wasn't abused physically, but I had a ex partner who used to gaslight me. Yeah, and I just I can't listen to it. Yeah. No, fair enough. Um, Darlene, yes, I actually covered, I actually spoke about um, the uh, the mechanic earlier on because he was one of the ones that the judge decided was not allowed to give any testimony in the UK case, which I thought was interesting. So, um, I haven't seen that either. Uh, as the youngest, I was holding the rabbit ears holder, adjusting the tinfoil hat. Fair enough. 
To an Elaine extent, has Frederick now... Bolton is right. He, Rottenborn did do a little bit of facts, not in evidence, but he, he definitely centred his argument on the law. Yes. She's gone missing from all interviews. Judge A might have sanctioned of citing jury via. Ooh. Now I oh, really yeah. want to know. Yeah. Because actually I hadn't thought of that. Isn't there something in law that you're not allowed to disparage the jury in the jury decision? Uh, yes. Yes, there is. Uh, and you're not allowed to do anything that might bring the profession into dis- disrepute either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just thinking of oh, she could be in trouble, dude. Uh, this is what happens when you drink the all women must be believed Kool-Aid. I disagree. If Elaine said she stands with a client, I would respect her professional position. Instead, she is doing what AH did and doing what she... Exactly. Yeah. I said, yeah, yeah no, that's, happy that's to help. It's an argument to be made against what I said before, yeah. Yeah. Uh, court TV got cancelled, citing Elaine had a court emergency, which is generic. Could be anything pending any cases, yeah. Um, I was just thinking too to that all women should be believed thing. I actually, I get really fucked off. I think gender needs to just stop being used as an excuse. It should be all, all, um, all accusations every, should be listened to, weighed, and reacted upon based on the weight of the evidence. Yeah, I, my my personal preference is, um, was it? Uh, oh, I did have a snappy thing for it but basically yeah gender shouldn't come into it every allegation should be investigated but without prejudice until substantiated and behind closed doors like keep that shit the fuck behind closed doors yeah 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 it shouldn't hit the public it it shouldn't ever hit the public forum truth be told i really don't agree with um airing laundry in public Mm. i think johnny had to in this case because it was his only recourse um yeah but yeah, like I said, I think Amber pushed him to a point where he had to hear it in public. But I, I would have rather not known a lot of what I now know about Johnny Depp. I didn't, I don't, it hasn't changed my opinion of the man, but I did, it's none of my business. Yeah. Leo, I'm sorry to hear that. that that's not great. Right. Leo, um, I'm just reading Leo. Don't forget I'm a little bit behind you because I'm on the YouTube stream. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Um... Yeah, Elaine's throwing the judge and jury under the bus. Yep. Did she make comments about the judge? Yeah, she said that um, uh, things about the... Oh, hell. Um, okay, I wholeheartedly retract my previous statement. Um, I, I tell you what, look... I was credibility, but... Look, it, it's... Um, I'm at the start of page 29 of this document. Do we want to just go and quickly rehash over... Um, over her interviews, so you can see what she actually said. Because, and well, then I'll call it a night because it's almost quarter to three. It's not a bad place in the document to call it a night, but I mean, if there's, yeah, I, I'm kind of curious what your take is on it. Like I said, I couldn't watch it all. It was just too, it was, it was too much propaganda. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. That's fine. Maybe the yeah, so Let me put a notation down here. UK. What's this? What What do you officially call this article? Oh, I'm um, <laughs> I won't read out the entire thing. Just no, no, just no, no. Say... What do you officially call this document from the UK decision? Uh, well, it's just the UK decision because otherwise it's it's Dep Dep the second v News Group Newspapers Limited no, and good. another UK decision part one end end of timestamp. <laughs> <laughs> that works. <laughs> Ah, man, I, sh- I should have watched uh, I guess I should have watched those interviews more. Can we ask what Kiwi's professional background is? Shit all. He's here for the layman perspective. Oh, <laughs> I have a professional background. It's just not facts and evidence. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I haven't been hit that hard since Amber Heard. <laughs> <laughs> You owe me a joke. <sighs> All right, hang on. <laughs> See if I can find a good one. 
And if the audience is wondering what the hell is going on, every time one of us does something to bring the other into disrepute, <laughs> they have to, self, to tell a self-deprecating joke. Uh, <sighs> all right. A British, <clears throat> a British man is visiting Australia. The customs agent asks him, do you have a criminal record? The British man replies, no, I, don't, I didn't think you still needed one to get into Australia anymore. <laughs> I'll let you get away with that because my grandfather, my, yeah, my grandfather used to tell me that joke as a young child, so you just hit the nail on the head. Well done. Mm, thank you. Redemption um, points granted. I've got a book of them somewhere, but anyway. Um, <laughs> MJ, thank you, Law Patrol. Please join other shows and review this information. Many aware of questions around the case. I don't have full details. Um, yeah, look, I, I put my feelers out wherever I can. So, you know, if people want me on their streams, I'm more than happy to join them. But, um, you know, I can only do so if I get a link, basically. Mm. Um, Elaine's frag flagrant statement regarding the jury violation, social media viewing, impeaching without facts, insulting the court process as a professional is unethical. Yes, that, that is something I've been saying for days. Excuse me. Elaine okay. is playing okay. jump rope. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. No, Elaine's playing jump rope with e so many ethical lines that it's not funny. At least that's look. That that is purely my opinion as a lawyer. That is my opinion that she's playing jump rope with her ethics. But you know, we'll have to wait and see. Um, where are we? Overhauling was my first view. My first glimpse into her strange pathology. Chip foos is far above a mechanic as he's premier. Okay. Is not allowed to show cancellation? Okay. Fully agree with you. Don't just dismiss our conclusions, but just believe all women is BS. Yep. I was Anything like, well, that defines I'll... itself by gender bias is, is, is BS, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, absolutely. You really want to, You have no clue the stupidity you're doing, so pissed off at her for that. Yep. Judge, jury, US legal system, Tug, and anyone with a brain that watched the trial live are all under Helene's boss. <laughs> oh, cheers. You're an absolute legend for going through this journey. So much context that I didn't have before. Feel much more confident in saying Elaine is full of it. Yeah, and look, as I said... This, uh, based on how long it's taken me to get 30 pages in, I reckon this is probably going to be one of three. Um, and I, I don't know if we'll be able to get the second part done tomorrow. Sunday nights are usually a little, little bit rough, but we'll see what happens. Um, where are we? I do think there's a 21-day limit to file for jury misconduct. Don't know. Yeah, and that, I'm fairly confident that's part of the reason why they're going back on the 21st is that um, there's that 21-day gap and they've got um, objections and various other things to put in. Um, so it'll be certainly interesting to see what happens. Well, it did start as a penal colony. Yes, and that is one of the things that Kiwi and I have gone over on a couple of occasions. <laughs> Australia was a penal colony. Yes, to clarify, Australia was a penal colony. The people in the UK, if they did something as little as steal a loaf of bread, got stuck in some manacles, stuck on a ship. The people that survived the trip went up in Australia, setting up a new country. So, um, yep. It was mostly debtors, called debtors convicts, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think that's about right. Um, I mean, if there's anyone out there that's watched, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, Call the Midwife. There was an episode, uh, I want to say it's season four, season five, um, with the woman and her, uh, the young kids that are living in squalor. Um, at the end of the episode, they talk about how the young, young kids get shipped off to Australia. Same sort of thing. It was basically any, anyone in the UK that was a problem, they shipped off to Australia. Mm. Um, um, Elaine has... carry on by the way just because there's a whole bunch of new people in chat yep. don't forget to hit those little buttons down there that go blingity blingity and help this guy get out to a bigger crowd because every every small channel needs it and um, 
it's really cool to see almost 100 people sitting in the chat right now. So hit the like, subscribe, do Holy the bell. Holy crap. How are there 100 people sitting here with me? I'm going to have to start doing... <laughs> I'm going to have to start making this a regular time then, because that, that's easily one of my largest consecutive concurrent... It is. I, I, this is, this I, is I can't even numbers. get the words out. That, 96. That's... I've been watching 98. I'm waiting for it to hit triple digits so I can start giving you shit. <laughs> 99 come on pop is cheery Oi. <laughs> there we go 100 people are officially watching oh, right right. Now, Mr. Hayden. that is amazing uh elaine's alleged ethical violations are stacking up yeah they're starting to get there that's for sure also, did anyone notice when Amber was 102, when Amber was emoting during testimonies, neither judge nor our own legal team asked for a break or pause for well, What does that say to observers? That she was just being hysterical as opposed to showing actual genuine emotion. It's not like she was actually tearing up and, you know, um, she didn't get herself worked up to the point where she actually needed a break. She was going, I am an American. That was really bad, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it was, but I'm going to move on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Actually, here's something people yeah. never, ever, ever say. Like, they talk about the likes, the subscribes, the bell, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I actually reckon there's a more important button on 24th. the screen, and that's the share button. Oh, cheers. Like, no worries. Happy to hit, help. Hit that share button. Put it out there. Send it to your mate. Send it to your family. I mean, it's totally on. Yeah. 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 If, if there's anyone that wants to get out there and share it, by all means, the, the more viewing hours I get, the better. Um, Lane's behavior was totally unethical. If the judge wanted to, she could sanction her or suggest she faces the bar. She could stand to lose her license to practice law or her behavior. Yeah. I genuinely believe that that is a consideration. Yeah. Australia still has visiting about. hours. <laughs> <laughs> that was clever i'll give you that one for it that was clever <laughs> i hate the whole it's everyone else's fault ah and elaine are all about it and i got sick to my stomach when he tried to say if amber loses it will be set back for victims i was screaming at the tv yeah well I thought, I thought that was disgusting too. I thought the fact that they tried to use the weight of genuine victimhood as a sway to the jury was just disgusting. So, Australia was a punishment, but the US was considered okay. Really, I'm shocked. Yeah, well, to be fair, you got to remember the US was settled by a bunch of Christians that were too Christian for the UK. <laughs> yeah, true. The Puritans. Yeah. So they, they legitimately went out there looking for somewhere. That's. Truth to be told, very much appreciated. Thank you. I love Isaac Baruch. Like seriously, I've 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 seen a fair bit of testimony live and televised. Thank you. And there yep. are very few people that will stick out in my mind like <laughs> Isaac did. Oh, yeah. I Isaac's one of those people that you know he's just sort of. Um, it's going to be years. Like a perfect witness. He's a perfect witness. He really was. Like honestly, oh, if they asked me yeah. what was one witness that that proved that won that case for Johnny Depp, I think it was one way back with Isaac. Mm -hmm. Nothing yeah. came close to disputing him. Almost up to two thirty. Am I? Yeah. Sitting on one eight seven. I'd say it'll upgrade after this. One eight seven seven eight. Oh, look at that! Wow. Yeah. Far out. <laughs> 100 plus are here for the Law Tube heroin. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, where are we? Just trying to get some of the get to the bottom of some of these. Damn, everyone keeps chatting. Um, junior judge did not allow any reference to the UK trial. Uh, that's not strictly true because they did use testimony from the UK to trial to impeach. Um, yeah. But that's about it. Uh, read the Marbo case. Yeah, look, I actually did a, a brief thing on Marbo. I think it was would have been yesterday because it was thirty years for um, since the uh, Marbo 
uh, was it? It's, it was Marbo Day anyway. Um, I'm going to do a proper thing on the case, but I did a little bit of a spiel on my video yesterday. Uh, Isaac's your spirit animal. Okay, fair enough. The Bar Association is a separate entity of peers that decide if Elaine's conduct may be breaking the rules of ethic and conduct. These hearings are usually held privately. Yes, that is true. I like the comment you just went past as well about the spirit animal. He definitely is a spirit animal. <laughs> if that's your cup of tea. Should be all shut up until you catch up then. No, look, that's perfectly no. fine. <laughs> um, no like at Puritans, we don't have a store. We sit on a... <laughs> oh, I love Black Hatter. My favourite is Black Hatter Goes Forth. Just because he manages to take one of the worst events in history and turn it into comedy. That's hard. Mm. All right, where are we? Hang on. So I'll bring up... Uh, Ugly American, working, and what's this one? Hang on, what's, what's Amber Heard EB tandem two? Is it? EB, who's EB? Oh, Lane Bredehoff. Okay, Lane Bredehoff. Yeah. All right, hang on. So yeah, if she I go really gets and... hitched horse to the wrong wagon. <laughs> you think? Um. All right, and share screen. And, uh, when, Wendy's starting to look. I think Wendy's a closet troll. I, I think she likes to incite interesting things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep my eye on Wendy. From both sides, she claimed that he abused her, while he said she was the abuser. In his reaction, Depp wrote, "The goal of this case is to reveal the McMuffin. truth, and that truth never perishes." <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt All right. We did also reach out to Johnny Depp's team, but they declined to be interviewed this morning. Elaine, thank you. We're so very glad you're here. So who's a CBS? Ugh. Thank you. Uh, we heard Amber today. This, this seems to be yep. a huge victory for Johnny Depp this morning. Yeah, a major setback for women. Mm -hmm. For women inside the courtroom see, and outside right there, the court. Right because there. Pause it for a second. Right there. Is, That's where I stopped it, on this interview because... Her response to a major victory for Johnny Depp is a major setback for women. Yeah, it was a. It, it, I, I I think I said it in. Um, uh, actually, I think it was in Joe's stream on Thursday. She, she has got deflectors that rival the Enterprise. I swear to God, she any question that she doesn't want to answer. I was fucking hoping that's where you were going with that analogy, and I epically love the geek purity of that. <laughs> what this said it, you know amber had an enormous amount of evidence although a lot of it was suppressed in this case is bullshit <laughs> nothing <coughs> nothing was suppressed hang on, hang on. Even of... if it was suppressed how much was suppressed by them true it was purely that there were various things that weren't admitted because they didn't fall within the rules of evidence mm -hmm. but i'll but i'll yes, know they... because it because it was because it didn't fall in their favor. Oh no, evidence was suppressed. All this stuff was kept out for, away from the jury. As opposed to the UK. But look at all the women who have no evidence. Mm -hmm. All these women who suffer from domestic violence, domestic abuse, they don't have okay, evidence. And basically Pause. what this jury said is... In... Okay, if, if she just said all these women that have no evidence, all these women that have no blah, 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 why is it then... If there is such a massive lack of evidence, why is it that the overwhelming, overwhelming majority of domestic violence abuse cases find in favour of the accuser? Why? It's if the bar is so high, why is it that more men are convicted of domestic violence than uh, found innocent? Beats the hell out of me. She's she like I said, she's skipping jump rope wherever she can. <sighs> Kara. Unless you pull out your cell phone and you tape record your spouse beating you. Oh. But Elaine, I think it was bigger than that because you had the evidence, as you say, but they did not believe her. Mm. Why do you think they did not believe her? I think she's full that of shit. a lot of that was that it was Johnny Depp. Uh, I think the celebrity status. But she's a celebrity, too. And and she's oh, comparable wait, no, she's to Aquaman. A, but she, but she's <laughs> Aquaman. She's a celebrity too, right? But you have to remember, it, we, it's a tale of two trials. All the evidence came in in the UK. Mr. Deb brought that. <laughs> uh, we, we will get to it. I'm not going right back to her right now. But she's full of shit there too. 
a whole heap oh, of yeah. evidence didn't make it into the UK case. Mm-hmm. Um, On her favour. Yeah, it was the, the the evidence that all got into the into the UK case was all the stuff that the Sun subpoenaed in relation to Johnny and his his um, action in Virginia. And as I said previously, the judge refused his application to for Amber Heard to have to do the same. So it was completely one sided. <sighs> when the burden of proof was on the son in in the UK because they had called him a wife beater and talked about the domestic violence. He had his opportunity to tell the truth then. Um, she was very careful there. She trial, said the son called him a wife the beater. She wanted that, acts that of sound violence, in there. Including sexual yep. violence. And that came out November 2, 2020. We weren't allowed to tell the jury that. Well, it's a different system, and the judge, it wasn't a jury, it was a judge. judge the judge uh, said it was substantially yeah. true, uh, and that's, that is significant, and I think surprised a lot of legal analysts. But, you know, in this case, the jury not only didn't believe Amber Heard, but in ruling that she acted with actual malice, that means she had the intent to cause mm. harm, right? That's a pretty Good high question. standard to prove. And it's pretty amazing, since the op-ed never even mentioned Mr. Depp. You have to remember no, that. No, but you what can't see she wrote it about him. UK Fuck up. ...is to demonize Amber, mm-hmm. which is what they did, and... Uh, Try to suppress as much of the evidence that came in in the UK and did not come in in the United so States. What about the evidence but the evidence came in during the trial. That's the why I wrote the op-ed. So here we had not only did we have a group of Depp fans that were there every day. A hundred were allowed in. They lined up at one o'clock in the morning for their wristbands. Also, oh, everyone that went into in court was a Depp fan. But we had everything on camera, Apparently. and we had tremendous social media that was very, very, very much against Amber. Very. It was humanized. pointed out that that was the first time that a victim of sexual abuse had to testify on live television. Mm. I, and I fought hard and lost that battle. So, I, no, it wasn't. So, Monica I'm, Lewinsky testified on live TV. NFL player. And after a hard and the loss, and the, and the and the impeachment hang on, hang on, this is the bit that everyone loves. The other side. Oftentimes, I realized the better thing to do was to look in the mirror. What mistakes did I make as a player? What mistakes did our coaching staff make? And then how can we improve from there? Do you feel like you guys made any mistakes along the way? Do you feel like Amber made a mistake while she was on the stand? <laughs> the face. Saying it's a celebrity, it's Johnny, it's, it's the people who support him. What about you and your team? Well, and, and that's an excellent question. And to say, and, and you know, Amber even said on the stand, I am not perfect. I am a human being. These people were giving no, her death threats. They threatened to microwave her baby. This is the kind of social oh, what? media she was getting. <sighs> What oh, half for fuck's sake? That that's... microwave a baby. That that's Reddit level trolling. Yeah. <sighs> so are any of us perfect? No. Is there something else we feel we should have done? Yes. I, I, absolutely. I I always I redo my closings a hundred <clears throat> times afterwards, whether I win or lose. Um, that's that's part of being a good lawyer, a good trial then lawyer. Then why are they still so bad, Elaine? But I think that there were <laughs> a lot of influences here that were beyond our control. And I think the social media, it, it was like a Roman Colosseum it is, is the best way to describe the atmosphere the here. And fuck? I have to believe that the jury, even though they're told not to go and look at anything, we had, you know, they have fair weekends, enough. they have families, they have... That's here, a fair point. The they're not they're to. And, and the 10-day you know, period we had, how could they not have been influenced? But Elaine, for most people watching this trial, and a lot of people, as you know, uh, have huge views. I can't it argue on that point. Be, I, too, wonder to so how and feasible it would be to so avoid. On both sides. On both sides. And I think for the, a lot of people from the outside looking in, I thought, don't think both it would have changed much, though, that they even if they both, had seen that it, they mutually abused each no. other. Do you not believe that that was the case? No, and, and that's one of the many misnomers. The way that Depp's team approached this was based on ignorance of domestic violence. It, they, it completely ignored the cycle of violence and just said, oh, she wouldn't have done this if he had been hitting her. That was their approach. So you thought that they weren't what, you mean the her? cycle of violence that Correct. says that I, if I she's abusing him, he might eventually um, become retaliatory? in fact a survivor of domestic violence. Yes, I, I absolutely believe that. And there's a tremendous amount of evidence, much of which did not come into this trial, did come into the UK trial. We even had more evidence. We had medical records. We had mental health records. Bullshit! This woman, she's not reading any notes. She's not stammering. She's not stuttering. She she, she believes this shit. I know. That's what, that's what's so concerning about it. I mean, she's been Amber's lawyer for oh, 
the, the earliest that I found was six years, but I, I do understand that there's people out there that have been able to attach her to Amber Heard a lot earlier than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, she, she, you know, people worry about Joe drinking the Kool-Aid. She's been drinking Amber's Kool-Aid for quite some time. Mm. Um, yeah, because she believes this. Because, like, she didn't even come across this way in the trial, this this firm and assertive in her words. Like, yeah. her, her mannerisms, like, she's nodding when she's saying yes. She's shaking her head when she's talking about things that are false. Like, when they ask her questions about did they make any mistakes, she looks genuinely incredulous. And, no, she 100% yeah. believes what's coming out of her mouth most of the time. Mind you, I can't say I'm shocked, particularly the way that she acted, I mean, in various points. I mean, even with um, even with her closing and she, the way that she just started, oh. like, rolling her eyes and that sort of thing. Oh, my God. You can probably tell me better. I've never seen a closing objected to ever, let alone from both sides, at least once in a, in a duration. It's generally considered poor there? form. It, it, is hmm. genu it, it is generally considered poor form because in... In closing arguments, it's it's literally, you know, I mean, she got objected to because she was talking about shit that she really shouldn't have. She was she was testifying to the jury. She was saying various mm. things that were just inappropriate, and that's why she got objected to. They, as far as I'm concerned, they did it in a retaliatory retaliatory manner. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, their objections were purely to break up the rhythm of. Mm. Um, of Camille and Chu, and it was just, yeah, I think it was. Like, what I did notice one when he objected the first time, and she came back and she mm -hmm. very she rephrased it. Like, to quote a verse from the Bible, Paul was often noted as saying, This is what I say, not what God says, right? Now, if you take, say, she did exactly the same thing, this is what mm -hmm. I am saying, not what the testimony said. Yes, can she yep. get away with that? <laughs> Look, she can give her own opinion because she's putting a um, she's putting an affirmative case on behalf of her client. But no, that that was part of the reason why I said she was playing jump rope with ethical rulings. The way that she was doing it is just it was not appropriate. Are you allowed to just blatantly misrepresent the facts that have been in evidence and then no. just trust the jury to know you're full of it? No, absolutely not. <clears throat> so yeah, because I admit, out of her entire closing argument, I think I've only watched seven to ten minutes because it just, what'd you yeah, say it just, you, you, you only saw seven to ten minutes of a closing argument yeah i just i couldn't watch it i skipped through because it was just very much like a lane it was she was like she was standing behind a pulpit trying to trying to convert the church yep fair enough actually something about the amica cream as well um it's i mean everyone's amica. I know it's Annika. I'm taking the piss. I don't think I, I don't think people actually realise how late in the period the Annika cream actually comes in. So for all these years, all this is going on, and it's not until late 2016 that someone actually mentions it to her as something to use for bruising. Mm -hmm. So how is it that she's making all this, all, making all these comments about oh, I was using ice and Annika and whatever, and it's great for. Um, the ice so hiding bruises. There and was a huge like... Reddit thread on um, a guy went on a makeup artist, and yep. he got somebody that had a bruise, and then he attempted to cover the bruise with makeup. And the the top voted comment, or how do you how do you reduce swelling, was ice. And then like the very next time she testifies, ice, which she didn't mention prior. Yep. She was um... fully watching social media the whole way through that trial. Oh, absolutely. Because um, where are we? Sorry, I've just jumped through. Yeah, because I mean, look, yeah, it's, so it's page need... 86. So I'm going to say we were using a makeup wheel before it even existed. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You're talking about the, the four color toner wheel. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. didn't even get invented until 2017. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Released. Yeah. Because um, where are we? So. And is there more of these? Like I've heard that there's like four or five of these interviews. I've only seen bits of two. Oh yeah, but to be perfectly honest, I don't want to. I, I don't no, want to show too many more if it's going to piss no. off the viewers. Um, no, I, I just find it interesting. So the the um, so the Arnica cream, 
that doesn't show up until 22 May 2016, which is the day after um, that Io calls the cops. Yeah. I just want to have a thought too. Just Kim said something interesting. She can give an opinion as an agent of lawyer for ABBA. This whole case was about Waldman giving opinions as an agent for Depp, and it was found to be potentially defamatory. That is so, true. There is one difference here. Elaine is still technically covered by litigation privilege. because ah, the, the 21 because, days. Yes, because the 21 days is still going. She's she's still able to – she's still covered by litigation privilege. What about, this, what about the, um, the Washington Post republishing the op-ed? That I thought was BS. And I think putting it up there that they go that they'd only remove it by court order or something. I mean, I haven't actually read the statement, but um, what's that? Good counter to yes. former Judge Janine Pirio. Attempt to impeach your own client to be aware. Good counter to Elaine's interview, former Judge Janine Pirio. Oh, I'll have to Google Judge Janine Pirio now. No, that's all right. Got it here. I'll um see if I can. Yeah, because I've, I've frankly I'm not going to finish that interview. I've had enough oh, of it. Is that is that the check on the five? Sorry, is Judge yeah. the Bureau the, on the five? Uh, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I I don't know a huge amount about American TV. So, uh, what is it? Fox News Channel. Yeah, yeah that'll be. Yeah, I, I watched a few bit of these guys during the whole Trump era. Oh, okay, fair enough. Oh, I love Trump. He was so entertaining. One witness has falsified, has testified falsely with respect to one fact. You are free to disregard mm. the entire testimony. Yep. This will lied over and over again, and I feel free to say that on television. Mm. She lied. She was a liar. She was the abuser, and he was the victim. And let me just say one more thing. Mm. For him to take on this burden, which is not only proof that he was defamed, that she was talking about him, but that she was malicious, that jury had to really see right through her to right. say she was malicious. And they found mm. for him 10 million compensatory, 5 million punitive, punitive, punitive damages. That's to punish you, Amber Heard, yeah. for, for taking on this guy's life and destroying his life so you could be part of the Me Too movement. Don't give me this stuff. I just you want know, to say how the truth be told You do as not well, represent women. I've seen him you in represent a the bunch worst of the Lord Troops trains over the last month or so. so. Welcome to Hayden's, brother. Or sister. Um, where are we? All right. Um, I want Elaine to do an interview with Pierce Morgan. They're both vile humans, but I'd like to see Elaine try to survive that. Oh, that's that's like that trying to stop interesting. the nuke with a nuke. True. It's it's the unstoppable force meets the immovable object. That'd be actually I really think interesting. Would survive. All you need to do is throw in Jeremy Clarkson as a as a mediator, and it'll be oh, you can don't. sell tickets. Please don't. And we could we could have um, what's his what's his name um, the gay guy Graham Norton, um, Graham Norton. As, as the commentator. <laughs> that could be funny. There were two nine one one to yes, there were two nine one one calls, and yes, they did come twice. Yes, they did. Um, that, and it that's was only something the I'm... second set of footage that they captured the supposed stains. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, but that's fine. Look, I, as I said, I'm currently on page 29 out of 109 of the um, document. So I'm going to cover probably the next 30 pages in the next episode that I do. But it is now quarter past three in the morning. So I am probably going to call it for a little bit. Um, but I very much want to thank everybody for joining. I'm officially going to call this part one um because i could easily be here for another five or six hours to go through the entire documents um but yeah needless yeah, to say but... in a nutshell the whole thing has just been an absolute shit show the judge was incredibly biased in my opinion and yeah I, basically once i get all through it i'll go through and try and summarize it down as much as i can but i'm already trying to do that basically and can, it's can i um put a penny in the hat and say can we call the next one the number two <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. 
It's only... Uh, it's only 11 oh, no. I, 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 I drop I, in the chat. What? Drop in the chat. Oh, crap. All right. Number two gate. Oh, no. Two gate. Number two gate. Yeah. For <laughs> the Battle of the Battle of Waterpoo. The Battle of Waterpoo. Oh, you know we're going to spend the next few hours when, when I actually wake up just nutting out new and imp- new and improved justice for the dogs. You know, I was. Everyone kept saying you can't handle the truth moments. I I just wanted a you can't handle the poo moment in the herd trial. I really did. I'm serious. Oh look, I'm sure at some point someone will, but until um, I, I'm actually very much on on the same. Uh, page as a lot of the other commentators as well until the 21 days is up and until we know what the basis for our appeals are going to be i don't think we can afford to influence the public too much frankly because we don't want to give them any legitimate reason for an appeal um Mm. so okay well then we can preface every single stream as the opinions here and and here of are purely for uh do you, do you watch any of, of the streams? Do you, do, do you watch the streams when I start? There's a disclaimer at the start. I don't watch the disclaimers. I'll be honest. I don't watch anyone's disclaimers. <sighs> it's like reading the TOS. Who the fuck does that? Okay, well, just for you. <laughs> oh, <fuck>. <laughs> <laughs> now I've seen it. Now I'm legally obliged to follow it. Yep, more to the point, the copyright disclaimer. My, the last sentence on that, I love. In other words, take your complaints elsewhere. Smiley face. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, look, as I was saying, I, I just want to thank everyone for joining. I can't believe that there's still 98 people that's been watching. That's amazingly huge for me. Um, uh, and we got more... Go on, try and catch up on chats, I dare you. <laughs> I'm not even sure where I stopped. <sighs> Speed reading with Hayden. Can he make Hayden it? He's on board this case, so she knows everything. She's an ex-experienced lawyer that has practiced for decades. I doubt she was tricked by H. Um, there's a difference between being tricked and indoctrinated, honestly. Um because, yeah, she has been practicing since, I believe it was 87. She's been litigating for 38 years. So, yeah, she 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 probably knows the ins and outs of her um, of her practice, but there's a reason that I think most of her cases settle before getting to court. Mark Ruffalo has a phobia of dog porn on a stick. <laughs> Entertainment purposes phobia. only. Phobia of dog poo on a stick. Give him a break. He was asleep. All right. I think that's me. Uh, I do if I want to possibly violate any tears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that one too. That was good. With purpose. Lol, who leads, reads the disclaimers? Police saw nothing. No, no, they very much did not. Can't you move on to crayons? Oh, that's right. Crayons. Crayons. So, I've forgotten about the crayons. I, I too had forgotten about the crayons. I, I looked at a pack the other day. I went into a um, $2 shop and I looked at a pack of crayons and I went, I wonder if we should just grab them just to be a smart ass and hold them up to the camera. <laughs> uh, I must admit, I do have sitting in my eBay f- um, cart an oversized packet of crayons. <laughs> Forward to the next one. Enjoy with the coffee. PV- WD Smackdown with Elaine. Oh, Nandine Canabu, Amber Public Enemy Number Two. Nice Johnny Heard movie reference. Oh, I'm just so worried about. Oh, what is it? What if anything? Can you smell what the rock is cooking? <laughs> <laughs> that that's how long it's been since I've watched wrestling. The Rock was still in wrestling when I last watched with my grandfather. That was a long uh, time ago. Pass the green and page friends. I need to cover a bruise. Sounds like a 
traditional tribal name, isn't doesn't it? What if any? I wish I was joking, but I actually used it yesterday when I was in court. Um, no. Yes. It, no. It, it, it's it slipped out. I, I, I said, uh, what was it? Um, we were talking about some documents, and I said, so what if any implications were there about in relation to this? And um, even the member sort of po- – the um, – the the person presiding sort of paused and like I think even they for a split second realized what I'd said. Yeah. So <laughs> I can't believe you did that. Oh, I, I said I was going to. I did. I, you I knew did. I was going to do you that. Did. Yes, you did. You did say. What if but any you, disclaimers? You also <laughs> said you'd wear a kangaroo suit if I bought you one. No, I didn't. You said you were going to buy it. I didn't say I'd wear it. <laughs> I remember having a conversation where you 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 specifically stated objection here. So you you all oh, overruled, damaging to my claims. <laughs> objection! This is on what grounds? It's devastating to my case. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we even talked about we even talked about ranger hats. Okay. Oh, I do there remember was... that. I uh, see. Okay, so that's admission by acknowledgement. No, no, no. I said I remember the Ranger hats. I didn't. I didn't say anything about anything else. It's a nice try, though. Uh, you should go to bed. You have nine minutes before your wife hates you. Pretty sure that's already going to happen anyway. But yes. Um. Anyway, <laughs> everyone, it, it, it was lovely that you all joined me. I, as I said, I'm sorry that it was, um. I'm sorry I gave so little notice, basically. It sort of just happened off the cuff when I actually got through reading the judgment and wanted to get some stuff off my chest. But thank you very much for joining me. And um, I'd like to give a very big shout out to my collegial clown over in the corner at Kiwi Thinker. And <laughs> we'll um, we'll catch you later. Stay healthy, wealthy, and wise. What is it? What? Just said what he said, and then you're supposed to say something else, so you get the last word. I wasn't sure what the hell.